It's 33 Burning Star Wars Questions. Joining me today is the Star Wars expert and gamer, the Matt Cave. Hello there. <laughs> we got the jaded fanboy, Star Wars expert. Mm. Just look at the posters behind him. Old, old school Star Wars expert, not, not hey. a modern day expert. As usual, the modern day Star Wars questions are at a minimum. It's, it's going to be completely things that happened before, you know, when Star Wars, oh, so when Star Wars when was Star Wars was good. good. When Star Wars was good, okay, I understand. And, and much. some bad batch stuff. And we got Onzo. His YouTube channel is Biggerford Entertainment. What's up? Uh, you didn't call me a Star Wars expert. What? I'm not a Star Wars expert. I like Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? We got the Star Wars expert aficionado. He was there in '77, first row. Were you there? Yes, I was. Well, not yeah. first. Well, I was in first row. But... No, not first row either. I know I probably was first row because I was like three years old, right? So yeah. this little guy sitting over a chair, yeah, I was first row. Who are the official members of the Bad Batch? I would consider Crosshair out of the group and Omega in the group. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. now, I think Crosshair is going to end up back with them. But for now, he's out. He's he's on a weird fence right now, man. He crosshair is that last episode. I tell you, I'm I'm like, oh, is he coming back? And and then stuff went down, and it's like I, don't I think know. it didn't have a subplot that they went. On, they're probably going to try to explore, see if it works, and then if it does it, yeah, okay, he's back in again, just to mm -hmm. see what it's like. The way he shot that separatist really, really quickly, I think that's uh that's that's them telling us there's no redeeming this guy just he'll disappoint you he's like that ex you know maybe he's changed and you get back with him but he's still just as hurtful as he was the first time around that's crosshair yeah, yeah but if they go with like the star wars theme star wars has always been about redemption right so yeah. sooner or later True. he may come back I, I don't know if it was ever clear though did was it ever clear that his chip was removed yes yeah he, he removed it yeah okay he removed it yeah but even though, why didn't his brothers trust him? He's trying to make it seem like he's the victim. Get out of here, man. I've seen enough from you. You're not the victim of anything but your own choices. If, if not, then you wouldn't have shot that separatist. He's yeah, a victim you're... of circumstance. He's a victim of circumstance. You got to look at it that way. All right, we'll give him that. Two, how many Golden Globes are in the galaxy far, far away? What a timely question for, here by Chillmonger, thinking about, hey, what's going on in the real world? Current events, streaming uh, 33 burning questions. Golden Globes. There's got to be a couple. Why? Gold this is nothing is but yellow. They, they, they don't need the... Okay, look, Star Wars didn't need the Oscars. Sure as heck doesn't need the Golden Globes either. It doesn't mean anything. And even if they do win it now... It's it's the Golden Globes present day. Who cares? Somebody doesn't understand the question. I was going to say that. Oh. <laughs> he means many... like in the universe, like, you know what I mean? How many planets are Golden Globes, right? Basically. Oh, I believe there are a few, though. Aren't there? No, technically, I believe there are. I think there's like maybe two or three. Of just pure okay. gold of planets? Pure gold, shine. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're metallic? Yeah. Uh oh, sh I have to go online, but there's actual uh data on how the planets work and all the various different planets. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Star Trek, how all the various different planets work, and they all have different gradings. And there can be, and there are possible all metallic planets. So the fact that there could be actual golden based planets is an actual possibility. And it could be, yeah, utilized for mining and and all yeah. kinds of stuff. Well, C three PO is gold, so yeah, there's a gold, there's a couple golden planets there. Thank the maker. I think that's, number... a, that's perfect logic right there. <laughs> if Snoop Dogg were cast in Star Wars, his character was sipping on some milk, would it be green, Anzo? Or would it be blue as well? Be drinking mm. out of his left hand? No, 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 no. It would be green. He would have some green milk, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to go for the double. He's going to have one of each. <laughs> yeah, pretty much <laughs> jaded fanboy i don't know it depends blue. depends on which one spiked because he's not drinking straight milk i don't i don't see snoop drinking they're both spiked okay i, I just <laughs> then, then it depends the, I, I i have to go with snoop dog whatever liquor of choice he has because i don't think it's gonna matter 
If mm -hmm. it's got enough rum in it, he doesn't care what color the milk is. It's not going to matter. <laughs> Something well, tells me he I was going to say, sorry, Joe. Believe me, there would not be rum in it. There would be some other kind of green in it. Oh, I understand, but I'm it just would definitely be lines. green. <laughs> I, I'm going along the lines of, you know, the drink. Some edible biscuits, too. Mm. Or some edibles of some kind. What does Lando think about the five planets that the First Order destroyed? Nobody asked him. He just sort of shows up in the ninth movie, and he doesn't talk about Hosnian Prime and the rest whose names escaped me. Actually, I never knew the names of those five planets that the First Order blew up. What does he yeah. think about them? I feel like Ooh. Lando was very much on the outskirts of everything. I don't think yeah. he really... Like, he was a general in the Rebellion, but when when the New Republic came into play and it became the Resistance, I, I think his invitation got lost in the mail. Mm. Yeah, I don't even know why we're talking about that movie for it, to be honest with you. But <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think at that point, Lan Lando probably didn't know what was going on because he was as not well. a prequel fan or sequel fan. <laughs> no, not that. But you know how they always like they put Han back to a smuggler. Him and Leia weren't together. So whatever Lando was doing before he became a general, that's what he was doing again. So probably back to smuggling and doing bullshit. Mm. I think he's a good man. Sorry for the language. My bad. <laughs> Lando Calrissian, he was like, man, you know how many kids I have on that planet and that planet and that planet? He was invested. Right, Jaded? Invested. Yeah. Well, it was a scrapped uh, plot line. He was supposed to have a daughter, and she was in Rise of Skywalker. But yes. they didn't. they didn't go for it. Yeah. I don't know. Which, more... which movie does Lando find out about the five planets that were destroyed? He'd have to have heard about it somewhere. It was big news. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, which, which timeline, like before he was in charge of Cloud City or after he was in charge of Cloud City? Well, this is definitely after because after, we're talking about yeah. the sequels. Oh, okay. Then he would then then he would have known about it because he's going. I'm not messing with the Empire because he had no chance. Because he's going. I'm not. Originally, he's going. No, I'll, 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 I'm I'm making a deal with Darth Vader because I'm not going to mess with the Empire. So if we want to go based on that, then he, he must have known about the five planets because he's not going to mess with the Empire. We got SSJK.Sanctum, the YouTuber, Star Wars aficionado himself. Mm. Me, uh, <laughs> casual Star Wars fan. Listen. There we go. That's better. <laughs> I was never a Star Wars fan, boy. Casual fan. You think you're a bigger star? Do you think who's the bigger star fan over you and me? Like, I think you might, I might have you. I mean, I played most of the games. I didn't, the only thing I did, I did not read really any of the books. I know of the books from what people told me and what I have researched, but no, I didn't read none of the books because they're not canon. Did you watch? Yeah, same with me. That's the way I think of it too. I don't, I don't have time to focus on things that are not canon. And I wasn't a Star Wars yeah. fan a long time ago when I was a kid. I became a Star Wars fan when all six already came out and the Clone Wars was on TV. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. the main canon is the live action stuff. That's the main, main canon. Mm. Well, no, there is some no. animated. No, there is some animated stuff that is. That's, that yeah, the Clone Wars is 100%. Yeah, canon. The clone, I was. Yeah, the Clone Wars is. That stuff usually retcons the live action stuff, which is it. The, the, the animated stuff is great. Don't get me wrong. Something well, most of it. No, they really didn't read maybe, con maybe retconned it some stuff like they retconned uh, Anakin and Clone Wars and made them better. Oh my god, that's not a red that's con. not a red con. <laughs> that is that is a red con. They're not even the same, they're not even the same person at that point. Oh they are not god. even the same person. Live action Anakin, a dweeb, trash. <laughs> Animated so, Anakin. So now you're dissing Badass. George Lucas's Star Wars, and we can't have none of that. All right, Kato? Live action Anakin is a chum, bro. I don't. Stop. He's a chum. <laughs> they're, they're, they're sand in my boots. <laughs> Rebels is canon, and it's amazing. I would agree. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Rebels is cool. Clone Rebels Wars is way better. They're about to make some... Rebels a lot better after this Ahsoka series. There are some. There are no, some so Star Wars it. video games that are considered canon as well. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, order. those are those are the bad ones. <laughs> they made the bad ones, Cannon. 
Number five, how open are you to reveal that there was secretly this clone youngling who was there the whole time? We were just talking about retcons. They say secretly said that Ahsoka, you know, there was a Padawan of Anakin this whole entire time. And they dropped us, dropped it on us about 20 years ago. We have it come to accept it now. It's just mm -hmm. normal. Can we do the same for a clone who's got Medichlorians? I mean, who, which, what clone youngling? The one in just, Bad Batch like or clone. Like, you know how many people are born over there on the Camino? Just one of them were born and they're like, wait a minute, you have oh, left yeah, before the yeah. Force. I mean, Can you accept I'm, that? I'm, I'm shocked that there isn't any. I'm shocked that Sidious didn't think to like clone any to use as his own Inquisitors and stuff. Because with these clones, when he made the clone troopers, but when they made the clone troopers, they literally put a chip in their head to uh, control them. So, yeah, yeah but how would that work? Nah, because there's you'd have to. It would be very gray area on whether or not that would work with somebody with the force because they're not their mind. Well, it's not saying it's all. Go, it's going to work on all of them. Like, um, if y'all play Star Wars: The Force Unleashed two, they mm -hmm. literally did the same as that concept. Yeah. Yeah. But the problem was the cloning process, since you know the main character was so powerful with the force and he was literally so freaking op. All his clones couldn't come out perfected the way the original was, and there's mm -hmm. only like one that was mm -hmm. done that was done correctly. Yeah, they so all kind of prove to us that yeah, Galen a Malik, of... Does that prove to us that some clones can have the exact right amount of force where you're going to be like, you know, doable? Yeah, it's, all, success, it's only going to be some a won't few. be. It's only going to be a few because the majority okay. he had, they were pretty much like mutated. It, it, it was like zombies. That you can control, but they're not like the original. Yeah, you know? I think but for, the, for this to work, the, the source has to be have the midichlorians, like has to be like. So they would say, like, let's say Django was force sensitive. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, that would have been replicated, but his clones wouldn't be as sensitive to it as the original is, which is kind of what what, what he was saying about Force Unleashed too. It's like the copies weren't quite there and it took a lot for vader to perfect that i mean we see cloning trying to use the force uh and and clone midichlorians happening already in canon we see it uh happening in the mandalorian where they're trying to capture grogu we saw it in the sequels because snoke was a clone and we see mm -hmm. his leftovers and his failed clones in the beginning of rise of skywalker yeah so the emperor has been messing with this stuff and it hasn't all panned out yet but, you know, we'll see where they go with it in the future because I think it's possible. It just, it takes a lot of work to get there. So if they do it, they got to do it right. Are you ruling out that Django Fett could produce a Jedi? A clone to say of Django. if he's not force sensitive at all and then produce then no. a Jedi from a clone? You, you would, you would have to take, no. you, what you would have to do is you would have to take a Jedi's DNA and his DNA and then mix it combined. together. Yeah. That's the only way to do that. Unless you can somehow, so you know what? I'm telling you guys, baby this is what the future Jedi. star is going to be. Um, they're gonna, they're gonna people, yeah, they're gonna be able to like literally make midichlorians like artificially, artificial force users. It's not gonna be natural born mm. stuff anymore. Disney's yeah. gonna do it. I can see it. The vision is there. <laughs> Well, we wouldn't need it if they hadn't have destroyed the entire Jedi Academy Luke was doing to reset and get some Jedis up in here. But I guess we'll, I'll take it however it gets. We get it. Anzo, what do you think about the question? How open are you if they just reveal, yo, there was this clone this whole time. He had Jedi powers and that somebody took him in. Um, I don't know. Like you said, they did it with a soldier, <clears throat> right? Because we never knew about Anakin ever having a Padawan. Then all of a sudden he had one. So... I'm all about if you do it right, then I'll be okay with it. You got you got to give a good reason, though. You know what I mean. So, would you rather live on a planet with two suns or live on Cantobite? Give me those two suns. I hate the cold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, well, I might. Have, I think two suns is a little too hot for me. I might have to go Cantobite. Play some you want to live on a crime there? planet in the hopes that you'll get rich? There's a reason why these casinos are profitable. It's because they take advantage of your emotions. Your oh well, if I do this, I can have the sensation of being happy. They ooh, no, cancel okay. by would ruin me. Note to self: 
uh, Chillmonger does not gamble. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I'm not saying it would be a good move for me. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a plan I go with, with Canto sons. Bite. You know, the, the planets we see with two suns are like Tatooine and deserts, and um, I'm good with that. How was the weather on Canto Bite? Finn was wearing a jacket, yeah? It wasn't snow. Um, no, no. The weather was probably like more like spring weather, it seemed like. Yeah, I could do yeah. that. Me too. So at least they sure. have a spring. They, they they do have a warm season. Mm-hmm. Which planet has the strip? That would no, no. Hold on. <laughs> Jabba had the hookup over there at his palace, didn't he? He did. I remember in Cantobite there was a couple women wearing some revealing, showing their, you know, yeah, the mm-hmm. cleavage, quadruple cleavage. There's some have... shady places in the Star Wars galaxy. We we see it in Andor right in the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> see it in Star Wars, the first movie. The first movie, yeah. No, mm-hmm. <laughs> Canto Bite, F the two sons. Man, am I alone here? How about you, K dot? <laughs> Canto Bite or Planet with Two Sons? Uh, Canto Bite's like mm. the casino planet. K dot's gonna say some food. I mean, probably the casino planet. It looks like the temperature might be balanced and stuff. Like, it's Tatooine, it's dry and it's hot. I mean, you really want to stay there? Unless you're staying in, like, the city area where they probably got AC and stuff. Yeah. Right. But I doubt they got AC. Damn. You know, you make the credits over in Cantabite, you vacation over at the Two Suns. I want the best right, of both Right, right, right. That, that. Cantabite <laughs> is the big city you go to work at. Tatooine is the, pl- is the place you're stuck living at because the mm-hmm. rent is cheap and you're trying to save money to eventually move to a Cantabite. <laughs> yeah. Would That's Lucasfilm ever cast one of those social media influencers. If you guys watched the movie yes. Free Guy, we had yeah. Bookie Main and she was playing games and she was there and we we're going, oh, that's cool. That's somebody from that sphere of Twitch is now in a movie. You think Lucasfilm yeah. would do the same? I think they get any of the popular guys in the Star Wars field and they make them a commander of some sort? They so- put M- Megan Stallion mm-hmm. in She-Hulk, which is owned by Disney. So I think if they had... A popular like YouTuber that they liked or TikToker, yes, absolutely, they would do it one hundred percent. I think they they believe YouTubers are ticks. I don't believe that they would ever do this. I, I don't think it would make nah, they would, sense. They, they, the... nah, they would. I, I mean, look look at look at the most recent Transformers movie. Um, they put Liza Koshy. She's playing RC, and she's mm. she used to do Vine. And and look at um, um, Book of Boba Fett. They have that. Dread dude, the rapper dude in there, right? So they're accustomed to doing stuff like that. So yeah, I, I could see them getting mm. a popular TikTok or influencer to put in there. It doesn't even got to be TikTok. It could be social media. So you and me, we qualify. You think they'd ever put you and me in a Star Wars? They'd be like, no, no, no. Let's just see what he said about Kathleen Kennedy. Well, none hey. of us would make it. I mean, hey, <laughs> listen, that, listen. That, that, as that much as I hate what they're doing with Star Wars, if they wanted to give me a paycheck to be in one of those movies, I would do whatever like, you want yeah. me to do. Put me in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there were a bunch of hidden cameos in the sequels under the Stormtrooper outfit. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cameos like who? Like James Bond, right? Yeah, yeah. Daniel Craig was the one that she does the mind trick to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get, get on James Bond, but that's not a social media influencer. Even well, he, anyway, Simon he Pegg. Um, Simon Pegg was in it. Look, yeah. I, get, I get chill. I guarantee you would see an influencer like Matt Ramos show up in a MCU project. And mind you, this they're all Disney. All these people work together. They share the same employees. Yeah. They would easily do the same thing as Marvel, like introduce an influencer into their stuff. Yeah, right. I'd only take the job if they made me a Jedi. I have nice. no time to play anything else. I need to be a wise old Jedi and uh, take care of business. Hey. Nah, I, I, I wanna, I'm trying to be a Sith Lord. Freak them Jedi. They whack. So as long as I have a lightsaber. <laughs> when is a good time for the 10, 11, and 12 trilogy? We asked this, Matt, uh, a couple of days ago. We were chatting about how much distance needs to be removed from this trilogy era to mm-hmm. the next one. I prefer if they keep it nice and close by because let's think about the characters that we have in Star Wars. Aside from Wookiees who don't age, so Chewbacca, droids, uh, Grogu's going to be young and, and he'll still be around for a long time. Mm-hmm. All the other characters won't really make it if we do like a 100-year time skip or something. Mm-hmm. I prefer keep episode 10, 11, 12 in the neighborhood of Ray and Finn, not because I like them, but because story needs to be continued. 
I do. I would like to see Daisy Ridley and John Boyega get the call and come back and make their characters ad- advance. I, w- I was going to say fix it, but that's not even the point here. I no, want to see things about continue. advancing. Yeah, moving forward. I, I agree. I don't want it to be too far out. Um, I, and, I, and I still stick to this. I was saying this the other day on Obsession Stream that um, I feel that they've already hinted at the future of these characters because and it was done in the silliest way it was in that lego star wars summer vacation special and the whole point of all those characters going on vacation together finn wanted everyone together because they're all going to be separating soon and the big thing he revealed was ray is about to go rebuild the jedi academy Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's fantastic. I want to see that happen. They also reveal and solidify that Finn is force sensitive. Good. All done in a children's special. So it flew under the radar. But when I saw that, I was like, that's where we're going. That's going to be 10, 11, 12. Like, if Ray is rebuilding the academy, she doesn't even necessarily have to be the main character. She's yep. just there running the academy, but let it be one of the students, an up and coming. Jedi of Force, you know, there's a lot of things they could do with it, but if you, again, if you jump 100 years, then boom, we're we're too separated. Mm-hmm. I need the kid with the broom to show up at that academy. Yep. Yeah. I personally, I want them to either go 100 years into the future or 100 years into the past. I actually want them to get away from the St- Skywalker saga <coughs> because it adds too much problems. People well, they're ruining this, they're doing this, they're doing that. So just go and do something totally different to where it has pretty much a little bit to no connection to what we've seen already. That way you can do whatever you want with it and people can't complain about, well, you ruined Luke or you ruined some old characters or something like that. So Mm -hmm. give me something in the future or something in the back, like Knights of the Old Republic or something like that. KOTOR. I was going to go... Hopefully, after I'm dead, so I don't have to worry about them. <laughs> but if it's going to be during my lifetime, wait until Disney has to sell the IP to somebody who's actually competent <laughs> and yes. do it in basically forget the Skywalker trilogy, forget it, just do an old, just start at the old republic and just start a whole new story arc. Has Disney ever sold anything? They've never had to, but yeah. they will. Would you say mm. K-Dot? What so about they, uh, 10, 11, they, 12? They don't need to. They're not broke. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Never. We don't need any more Skywalker trilogy. Guys, you guys call it the Skywalker saga. That was just branding. That was a way to get you completionists to watch eight out of eight films to watch nine out of nine. They say they branded the, the Skywalker saga. I can't with Ray. I'm sorry, but nah. <laughs> to keep trolling, keep telling stories in the world of it. Past, present, and the future. Okay, but I'm specifically talking about the new film trilogy, episodes 10, 11, 12. That does need to be uh, in sequence with uh, 789. Why? I don't numbers. think so. That's how numbers work. It's math. Yeah, but I think you can go far enough into the future and just end this story completely because that was that's why it's called Rise of the Skywalker, right? It's supposed to be the end of the Skywalker saga. So if you're going to go with the end of the Skywalker saga, then you go in a totally different direction. You go... Yeah, that's that, get rid that, of that. It's over and start start something new. Yeah, Since and part- I, I agree with Anzu. That's the only way. Honestly, I've not watched these last couple of Star Wars projects that came out. I didn't care to pay to watch them or even watch them. Skip Andor, skip Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. I only watch Visions and the other Star Wars short. I mean, I really don't care about 10, 11, 12 at this point because the story's going in a direction that I don't want to see. They butchered According them. to who? Do you know who's in charge right now? Dave Filoni is the chief creative officer. I mean, he but other stuff. it's okay. It, 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 it's this. Because they're not going to do what me and Anza want. Where we, do we want them to go like completely in the future? Like I'm saying, go 2,000 years into the future. Get away from all of this. Go mm-hmm. deep. Get away from all of it. The future. Mm-hmm. Go to the super future. Get away mm-hmm. from it. Because if they try to do a 10, 11, 12, Regardless of anything, is going to connect back to Luke. It's going to connect back to Skywalker. It's going to raise the Skywalker now. I mean, this- instead of calling it ten, tw- instead of calling it ten, eleven, and twelve, just call it Disney Phase Two. Phase yeah, because <laughs> Phase Two. Yeah. Chill, chill. I'm at the point where like 
to me, you destroyed Luke Skywalker. You killed Star Wars, like, best main character. It's like, I, 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 don't, I don't care about it no more like that. They literally destroyed Luke for me. I, I, don't, I can care less. You destroyed Sorry. literally your main character, the person yeah. who we followed. You destroyed his character. He, he can <laughs> still be alive. It, it, I saw him like, he touched it, the lightsaber uh, before Ray threw it into the fire. If he could do that and have physical interactions with the real world, he probably didn't actually die. And so that's my canon. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Skip says, "Oh, I got a lot of live chats. Or explore lesser known Jedi and Sith. But as much as I favor Jedi and Sith conflict, we don't need to keep major focus on them. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. They are the bread and butter. I mean, yeah. Mandalorian's I cool. All these other shows, Skeleton Crew, I'm sure will be great. I need my Jedi and Sith, right? Kate? Facts. And I, Facts. I, don't think, I don't think we have enough. The most focus we got was the prequels. And if you think about it, go back to the original trilogy. Like, the conflicts, the main conflict wasn't even really the Jedi and the Sith. The main conflict was the Rebels versus the uh, the Imperials. That was the main, main conflict. The, the Jedi versus Sith, it was part of it. Yeah, it was sprinkled in there. Yeah, it was sprinkled in. Like, we, we really. You're talking about the first trilogy? Yeah. Well, like, there we, were no Jedi. There was only Yoda living in Dagobah. Right. Well, yeah, that's why I say it was, you know, sprinkled in Jedi versus Sith con conflict. It's like. You know, but it, uh, to be honest with you, it wasn't really Jedi versus Sith conflict. It was more about the father and son aspect yeah, of yeah, it. Luke and just son. happened to be a Jedi. But Star Wars, to me, like it, it, even though it seems like it's secondary, that was still the main fo fo focus. It's Jedi and Sith. You know what I mean? And I think that's what they need to keep with Star Wars. That's yeah. that's what I want to see. The light in the dark. Yep. Yeah. Politics of the Empire have come to an end. We've solved all of that nonsense. And now it's just good versus bad, baby. More intimate stories, sure. Mm -hmm. A Star Wars story. Oh, blank. A Star Wars story yeah. is probably the way to go. That's okay. what Rather I'm trying than... to think. If, if they go forward, like, here's the thing. I, I'm with you, Chill Manga, where if, if you stick with the numbers, it has to make sense with what was there. If you're doing 10, 11, 12, it has to link to what came before. Yep. But if we head in the direction of staying away from all this, don't number it because that won't make any sense. That'll, yeah. you know, kind of screw yeah, it up. Yeah. Then, yeah, mm -hmm. like you guys are saying, go a thousand years in the future, 2000 years in the future and just call it whatever a Star Wars story or come up yeah, with yeah. a you know, creative title. Because mm -hmm. even if you, right. jump, if you do make that jump, mm -hmm. characters like Ray, Finn and them, they're going to be gone. They'll be dead. Unless Ray is going to be able to live for 2000 something years. Who knows? But you literally get away from it because with time things die. You don't be recorded yeah. in the history books. People, we're, there, Luke will be mentioned as a hero of the of the of the of the um, Republic of the rebels. He'll be mentioned as hero. But he won't be there because mm -hmm. time things die over time. The sequels continued the assassination of the Skywalker name after Lucas got the ball rolling with those god awful prequels. Hey Mike, no, don't start, Mike. I love <laughs> the prequels. <laughs> Shout out to Lucas, man. Always doing good. 789 make those prequels look like masterpieces. Obi-Wan and Yoda only led and trained like because they were trying to get rid of the last two major Sith who killed all the Jedi so they could rule. 1012 isn't needed. The saga is over. In my opinion, whatever they do, so we're, we're agreeing that... Actually, we're not agreeing on this one. Let me introduce this. Damien Lindelof is working on a Star Wars movie. Do we know if that's 10, 11, 12? Or do we know if it's just a Star Wars story. As far it's as I heard, it's a Star single one at a time. And then, depending on its success, we'll determine if it continues. I'll tell you, you why. You can't do that stuff. You got to tell me if it's 10, 11, 12. You can't if, retroactively call it 10. If 10, 11, and 12 is the Finn saga, I'm in. <laughs> That's the first positive I, thing I ever heard you say. I don't even think they might take John Boyega back after he's like. <laughs> publicly slandered this uh slandered that stuff twice they, they publicly removed his face from the chinese poster so we're even yeah. <laughs> at this point the entire sequel trilogy cast has come out with something they've all said something against how i mean but but it. but the way john boyega did it he did it the most cut though like that's why i respect his take the most because he didn't hold back he well he, 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 who's he, there at the company <laughs> that's still going to be there for these new movies like Dave Filoni's probably like, yeah, you're all right, John. Come back here. You're at least you can tell the truth. Well, yeah, I, I mean, hey, and if if one of them does hire them, hire him back, I do respect that. Like, you know, he 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 gave the most cutthroat opinion about his character and this new Star Wars trilogy. But you know, if one of the creators can go like, well, you know, I mean, he's not wrong. I mean, he's kind of correct. Let's take him back. 
you know, Push. most of these companies would get rid of you if you talk mm-hmm. like that. Most places, but then when they renew leadership, that's what happens. Like Henry yep. Cavill, technically, they could so they renewed leadership and it was like Henry Cavill's back, he'll be Superman. He did a little video, but then when they got James Gunn, it was undone. Like, nope. Mm-hmm. I know, but but for a moment they did renew leadership and they were like, let's bring back the old guy. Yep. Number nine, eight. Twen- no, I'm, where am I right now? Number nine. There you go. Where are your expectations for Mandalorian season three? <laughs> way too high. They ended yeah, on Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Way like <laughs> oh. my expectations are. So I expect to see Galen Merrick become canon and show up and destroy and kill everybody oh at the God. end of the season. I expect a lot. My expectations are pretty huge. Do you know who Galen Malik? Was his name Merrick? What's it? Merrick. Merrick. I'm a star killer. But Jaded Fanboy, do you know where that's from? No. Damn. He didn't look like he knew what he's from. Jaded Jaded hasn't experienced that greatness yet. The Force Unleashed video game. That's the character there who's got the Force. and No, not happening? Here's what I'm expecting from Mandalorian Season 3. That every episode is not a side quest. That's what I'm expecting. Mm-hmm. Please don't do that. I'm, yeah, I'm no more that. fetch quests and you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah it, it got way too out of hand. Every episode was some kind of side quest, and it's it was like the same thing over and over again. Hey, I need this. Well, you know what? If you help me get this, I'll give you this. And I was like, okay, I've had enough of that. So I hope it. I hope they get away from that for this one. I, I, I expect I expect to make just as much fun of season three as I did of season one and season two. It's true. <laughs> we asked, he answers. If, did if Luke, they, if, we're, if they're souping up for like a, a Mandalorian civil war on this planet or whatever that they're doing, each episode literally needs to be about this battle with the new strategies they make. Nothing else, not Mando going off the planet to find some special weapon. He already has a special <laughs> weapon, all that stuff. He's got his defense. He, Grogu has a little shieldy. What's what's like all the oh, chain and, uh, the and, and, and Grogu yeah. needs to become a Mandalorian at the end of the season. No, no. He already no. is. He's part Give of the crew. little helmet. Yeah, no, he, he, he he's a he's a Mandalorian. Yeah, he just needs Somebody, a he's a Mandalorian in training. No, no. He's Someone a Mandalorian. needs to punt Grogu at least in one episode. If you can have stormtroopers <laughs> punch him. Somebody's got to at least punt him once. You guys remember in the season one finale how one of those stormtroopers punched him and like they yeah. were getting hate mail because they yeah. didn't do that to Grogu. To oh, Baby Yoda. my favorite scene in the entire run. Oh my God, I love that scene so much. <laughs> I mean, hey, it at least established stakes. It means Grogu can get it to him. Are you crazy? <laughs> For 10, did Luke clear all of those death troopers? Or did R two D two have a little side quest of his own where there was one Death Trooper left? That's what took him so long to get up there to to meet with Grogu and Din and everybody. Oh, he's burning my imagination. Up he's super. I'll be honest. R two would have probably did something way more effective than Luke because R two is is a is 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 a little demon. Mm-hmm. R two would have did something smart like lead off. He can hook Trooper. up. He can literally hook up into the system more than Luke can. Mm-hmm. So. Right, yep, or yep. he would have just led the death troopers to to a to near one of those little docking stations, open it, or airlock, some airlock, and then where is that? Where's tales out. of the droid? I need that episode fifteen minutes short <laughs> yeah. of just showing He's us what about. Show. They had the droids animated show. It did all. It covered that back in the day. Yeah. See, there's a t- template now. If they want to honor history, let's continue that. No, no, don't. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, honor, the droids. don't honor droids. Please don't. It wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. Don't don't uh, crush my hopes, Anzo. Do you think that R2-D2 took care of a little Death Trooper on his way up? I think R2-D2 R2, R2, handled the Death Trooper absolutely 100%. Mm-hmm. He was in the X-Wing. He's like, oh, there's one right there. Let me just turn the X-Wing. Boom. Yeah. It. Hey, he took care of those two droids in, in Revenge of the Sith, remember? Yeah. He's the oil droid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He took care of them. So, yeah, absolutely. R2 has more droid deaths than the average youngling. <laughs> well, he does have kind of a weapon system whenever the plot needs it to. So. Karen Gillan's Darth Vader one was incredible. Did I just... You're yeah, you chipped out. Yeah. 
I think it was you because I didn't hear you. I don't know if anybody else. Yeah, it was you. It's Jill. Um, that's terrible. Here, you guys answer the question. Go, Levin. True or false? May the fourth is corny. Yes. Yes, but in so, all the best ways. It's corny, <laughs> but it got a nice ring to it. It does. I agree. I personally like Revenge of the Fifth. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering it should have been called Revenge of the Jedi, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> the Jedi's questions. don't Four take four. revenge. That's why it wasn't. It's just it got changed. Like, well, I would love to have one of those posters. You know what? I had an How opportunity. Extensive. I had an opportunity to get one of those for five hundred dollars, and I ended up having to pass it up because I just didn't have the money at the time. Mm. Revenge of mm. the Jedi. <laughs> What's yeah. going on, Second Street Marvel in the building? We got Trinity says we need to get together one of these days. Skip. Oh, he's talk- don't be talking to other people in my live chat. Talk to me. Let's get together, yeah, hit brother. That like button, guys. Hit the hey, like Trinity. Button. <laughs> This show is about me, okay? It's moi. It's my time. I don't want to go to the live chat where you guys can say, hey, buddy, buddy. If you want to say hi to me, you can say hi. Big Brel, hi. Tony, hi. You guys all said what's up. Don't waste my time because I click on these without reading them. And then you waste my time. Think of all the moments we were wasted. Me going and reading. uh, on This show, this stream is about Chillmonger's favorite YouTube channel. So try to understand that. (laughs) <laughs> the fandom always sets their expectations for May the 4th way too high. Actually, one year it was really good. I think we got the 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 first episode of Bad Batch. Remember that? That was May the 4th, wasn't it? I, yeah, was it? I think it was a May the 4th release. I, I believe that was the release day, and we're like, happy. you know. There were, and then the next year we were expecting a trailer. We didn't get anything. That, that was a lame one. I think yeah. they should utilize, because I don't think they utilize May 4th enough at all. It's just literally a holiday for Star Wars. I think they should honestly drop like a little Disney Plus special every May the Fourth. They so should. Star Wars related. It can be anything. It can be something for the kids, something for the adults, yeah. something for everybody. Just drop you something. Know, you can do an interview with George Lucas for sixty minutes. Like, like who wouldn't? Yeah, how George, George, how George come back and say, "Well, you guys." Yeah, if it was an interview forty years ago, I mean, give me a break. <laughs> well, we need, right. we, need we, George, we need George to come back and have. Um, uh, Dave flown you do the interview and say, Dave, thank you for taking that witch's spot. Thank you. Ooh, that's not happening. <laughs> oh, I meant witch, guys, not the other word. I meant witch, keeping it very PC. <laughs> witch, trust me, guys, she's still in the background. Let's not act like she's <laughs> gone. She's still in the background. Her movies, yeah, she, she whether is. people like them or not, they've made over a billion dollars. You know what I mean? So she's still on the up. She ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Dave is just a puppet. She's the puppeteer. <laughs> 12. True or false? And live chat, please answer. Obi-Wan cared about that football game in the diner, Attack of the Clones. What was his name? Jax? Who was the uh, alien who was in charge? Dex. Dex. There was a whole bunch of screens. There was a whole bunch of sports. A little alien football ha- happening. Did Obi Wan even take a glance up to look at the score? No, this is false. He did not care. False. <laughs> he's got like, a secret. Uh, like he, he's got a bookie and everything. <laughs> he did not care at all. Yeah, he, he Obi Wan's had three books in his past time. He doesn't watch sports. Mm-hmm. And Anakin does though. Anakin's probably interested in the game. Yeah, because when they went to the bar, there was uh, some pod racing going on. You know, Anakin definitely caught an eyeful of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pod maybe, but not football. I don't see the actual. He's probably betting some money on that pod racing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the way Quig, maybe the way Quigon did, but. But as far as Obi Wan being interested in that game, nah. Cole Definitely says, "Why not. do I have posters of those comic books instead of the real respectful stuff like Black Panther 2? <laughs> <laughs> Look, this Don't is uni- start, Cole. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing Black Panther this week. False. Next, next week when we talk about MCU stuff, guys, it's coming. Yeah, I might do Avatar next week. I keep saying I'm going to do Avatar. Just like I got to oh, get the right panel. Okay. Yeah, do Avatar. Yep. I still got to do my review of that dumb movie. We need George to come back and finish what he started with the prequels, the complete and utter destruction of the Star Wars franchise. 
<sighs> we said gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you can blame are? Disney for that. Mike, blame Disney for that. Disney already destroyed Star Wars. It's to the point now where I'm like, if Ahsoka doesn't knock it out the park, I am done. Really? I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, Mandalorian is before Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah, but Mandalorian, I'm expecting it to be okay. But Ahsoka is what I'm really excited for. So that's what I want. All right, I got you. Ahsoka needs to be dang near perfect, like not just anything average. That's <laughs> not gonna. It, mm-hmm. it needs to, not like it needs. I agree. To, it, it, I agree. It needs to be a more than average TV show. It just needs to be that. True or false? Star Wars has too much politics. False. Yeah, I'd say false. I I think it's. I say false too. A, false. A I think major yeah, part of the saga is the it. politics. And I will I mean, be the fifth to say false because they, although they do have a lot of politics, it is sufficient. Like it is a good story. Every in Andor, it worked for me. I like seeing the behind the scenes prequels. It worked for me, and um, everywhere else. Yeah, they even. Had- I wish they would cover more. I think the politics is just a fair amount. I don't think they cover enough of the mystical side of Star Wars enough. Hmm. I, even in Clone Wars, they had some episodes that were very politically driven. I mean, yeah. episodes where there was hardly any action. There was yeah. an episode where Ahsoka went with Padme to a separatist world. Mm-hmm. And it was all political. And that was one of the best episodes. Hey, didn't we see one of those characters in last in this week's Bad Batch? This week's Bad Batch. Yeah, I think that was her. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's you know a mean, five-way at, false. And Star Skip Wars, Tosh, that's false. Star Wars is literally built around politics i mean every majority of movies is about a war a war wars mm-hmm. is politics all of it is politics star wars started in, in politics is well favorite. absolutely because if you watch new hope you when they're sitting around talking to vader and tarkin it's all the politics there you yeah, know i was about so, to mention uh, that it's literally establishing the pol- the politics of the empire versus the Repub- the the rebel. rebellion yeah yeah, yeah. Most of the desert Star Wars scenes were filmed in Morocco and Tunisia. What does that got to do with anything, my friend? Disney was just following you Lucas's lead. Lonzo, can you blame them? You get a Metachlorian. You get a Metachlorian. 14. Yeah, or... yeah Mike. Lucas but if they, were following, Lucas if they were following Lucas's lead, they would have done his um, treatments that they had. They actually decided, you know what? We're going to go our own route. And that's what they did. They said, oh, hold on. I want to do it. Hold on. Which, which Lucas's lead? The Lucas's lead in the original trilogy, where people were putting a break on everything he was doing, or the prequel Lucas, where nobody said no to him for any reason ever? All of them. Facts, Jill. Good one. Good one. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Well, this is my favorite YouTube channel. You think I just say that? No, I, I kill it every single week. Tim's in the building. Second Street Marvel says there is nothing wrong with politics in any story. What matters is if it's well written. And if it actually applies to the plot. If it actually applies to the what's going on. Oh, Maximus. Hello, Maximus. True or false? Uh, 14. Attack of the Clones handled the chime jump well. Ooh, uh, 10 years into the future. I, I think for the sake of moving the trilogy along, yes, but still to this day it left me wanting that 10 year gap to be filled yeah i go honestly yes, for like attack so of clones well t- we should have been introduced to teenage anakin in the first movie i really yes. care because he really didn't mm-hmm. he wasn't that much of a factor it was, it was really qui-gon in obi-wan's movie anakin was more than just a side character in phantom menace hmm. um i i kind of think too like we should have got maybe a teenager Anakin, but I understand what he was doing with the trying to show him as the innocent little boy, and then how when he became the Jedi or he became a Jedi, how he started to get corrupted and stuff like that. So for the story, it was done well, but I agree they could have done a lot more so we could see the progression. You know, maybe in an animated series they could go back and do that or something like that. But oh, that could be part of Tales of the Jedi. If they yeah. keep going with that, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, one hundred. Obi Wan and Anakin. 
Oh, what, can, what can't be part of Tales of the Jedi? Like that was such right? an interesting thing that they introduced where we'll just take care of one little plot point and, and it treated us, not casuals, but us like uh, advanced fans with respect. They didn't have to dumb things down. This was for us. Oh, you don't know who Count Dooku is? Too bad. This episode is not for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> False. Attack of the Clones handles nothing well. <laughs> Sam. Oh, Stop no. it. Stop it, Mike. <laughs> Vader used to be a British policeman. <laughs> well, the, the actor, you mean? You to... Oh, yeah, when you hear the voice, yeah. Hmm. He was yeah. Scottish. Yeah. True Padme? More like pedo me. Oh, like a pedophile? No. No, 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 no. no. Cause no. Padme, she was only like what, third? She was 14 and he or was 10. nine. Yeah. Yeah, she was only I they Natalie Portman looked a little too old, but I mean, they're in dating range. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And they only started a relationship when they both became adults, so. Right. It, it, it's a big gap, but they are in dating range of one another. Mm -hmm. No, but you know, did you guys hear what he said back when they were younger? I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's our little Annie. Tech the Clones <laughs> told us about Annie and Obi-Wan's relationship instead of showing us. See, that's that kind horse of. talking inside of his head, telling him, you know, <laughs> think with your head. Think with your little head, not the big one. <laughs> so, true, they handle the time jump well. Thank you, everyone, for participating, including Rogue Comics, who agrees that the Attack of the Clones movie handled the time jump well. And there's no problem with the dialogue early in the movie where they were talking about how, oh, you're my this and you're my that. And they were showing rather than tell telling rather than showing. Mm -hmm. Well, the truths have it. Thank you. <laughs> Next question, 15. Jedi with fewer metachlorians wield larger sabers. Yeah, this has got to be true. Jedi's with fewer metachlorians. Really. They're overcompensating for something. Mm. Who has a larger saber than any other Jedi? That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, all, no, hey, true. Look at it like this. Grievous, he doesn't have any, but he compensates with like eight, four freaking lightsabers at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then so if we go along the lines of proportion to the height of the Jedi, then Yoda's really overcompensating. Because he's basically got a little, he got a yeah, he has a over. tiny, he has a tiny hilt that fits his hand. Yeah, it's just the saber that's long, but he has a tiny hilt that fits his but hand. Were, but compared its length to other sabers, Yoda does have a small saber, so he's not over there trying to oh, well, look at me, Mace, I can do it too. And he's, he doesn't care about that stuff. It's like you said, Grievous, guy with no metachlorians, oh, give me all the sabers I can get. You answered it right there. There are no buts. I don't want to hear anyone else's opinion. Actually, we should jump to question number sixteen if it were up to me. But go ahead, guys. <laughs> Okay, uh, when is when when was Grievous rated a Jedi? He's not, which is why he's, he's got this fixation with getting what's so many. The question: What's the question? With the length of this uh, larger Jedi saber? with fewer midichlorians. We Since Grievous saber. is not a Jedi, it doesn't really count. Well, I'm cheating. Point. I'm just going Force users. I'm cheating. But yeah, Grievous, did, Grievous wasn't. Grievous didn't have the Force either. Yeah. Yeah. Ahsoka used um, she had a short saber and a long saber. She had the one was more defensive because she was dual wielding. Mm -hmm. And you've seen, you know, in some of the expanded universe, some of the light, uh, some of the lightsabers will change in length depending on how the user uh, fights with them. Uh, so she has a combination of her stances. So it kind of it. I don't know. I don't know if midichlorian count would come into play with it or who's most, you know, sensitive to the force, but. You know, someone like Grievous, though, like you point out, being a non-force user, he's just like arming up with as many weapons as he can get. Plus, he had that fixation of, of collecting them. And so. didn't Ray have kind of like a saber staff? So that kind of justifies it. Yeah, she has pure mm -hmm. medic orients, real larger sabers. Yeah, because definitely <laughs> Ray was overcompensating. That's for sure. Oh, her, um, her uh, corkscrew. Yeah, her corkscrew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would have to agree. Based on a, from off of Ray, Jedi with lesser midichlorians have to compensate. That lightsaber was so ugly, too. It was mm. <laughs> horrible. I like this question if there's any spaceships made out of Beskar. That would be oh. cool. Yeah, probably somewhere in, in Mandalore. It'll be the new toy that I, they feature uh, coming up. Maybe Lime. I think it's too rare for them to do oh, yeah. a whole spaceship. 
But yeah. I mean, maybe if they ever find like uh, abundance of it, maybe they could do something like that. Be cool. It's too but rare it, now, but back then, maybe a little starfighter. Yeah, maybe something small. Maybe yeah. lined, maybe lined with Beskar, but not made out of solid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In in the reverse of that, Captain Phasma's armor was made from the armor from a Naboo starship, the same type that Padme flies. Oh, is that? So, mm. So why not? Like the that thought process is already there. There's a planet going. Oh, we have those resources. We can do it. How many midichlorians did Ray have? All of them. <laughs> Sixteen. <laughs> no, no, no. Ray. How much plot armor did Ray have? Mm -hmm. All of them. Jaded. Is this true or false? They were a cute couple at first. Well, no, because at first Ray didn't even give a didn't even pay attention to Finn. Finn was the one that was kind of all. Head over heels over Ray. I mean, those are the best know. stories. That's why they were cute mm -hmm. at first. True. Oh God, no! Because I don't. What? Wait. What? So I'm gonna watch a rom com? No, I'm watching Star Wars. <laughs> K -Dot, true, 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 or true, false? true. But they had a potential to be cute. I do agree with Jaded. In the first movie, it was more Finn infatuated with Ray because like, Ray, Ray. Like, calm down, dude. She doesn't care. Yeah. So much about it was his entire script. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is this true, Matt? Ray and Finn were cute at first? Uh, I mean, you know what? <sighs> they were. You know what ruined it, though? The moment where Finn goes, why do you got to go back to that? What, do you got a boyfriend? You got a cute boyfriend? Oh, um, yeah. Oh, you just pulled me right out of it, buddy. You, you messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so does I that agree. mean true, Anzo, or are you joining? I was saying true because I it, it was you know the part where they're running. She's like, "Why do you keep holding my hand?" You see, Finn keep trying. Yeah. To hand hand. <laughs> and then and then it goes to the boyfriend part, and it's just like, "Oh my god, are you kidding me?" But yeah, I Finn, agree. They were cute at first. Finn had to make sure nobody made claim to his uh <laughs> <laughs> oh to his what? Kate, uh, his what? Uh, his crutch? <laughs> his his crutch? It's all it was. His, his boo thing. His boo you know, thing. he had to make it. He had to be up front and say, hey, you with somebody? <laughs> you with somebody? That's his Naboo thing. Aaron says, got a boyfriend? Cute boyfriend? Ray and Finn were never an interesting couple. Not at all. Finn, <laughs> never any romantic subtext. Then you ask a question here about Omega's force powers. Which is a little bit of a what question are we on? We're on question 16, Star Wars Obsession. Would you mm -hmm. like to join? I think I already sent you a link. If I haven't, I will send you another right after this question. Man, they really made Finn a walking L throughout the whole trilogy. Yeah. He wasn't a walking L in the first movie, though. There was interest yeah. and there was plot threads that yeah. could have been further All on. The yeah, potential was in that first first. movie. Yeah. Yes. It, it, no, hold on. Yes, he was from the first movie. The minute they made him a janitor. Daisy. Daisy. Waffle House Wednesday. Now he asks mm. Wendy. Yeah, but it wasn't really established until later on. I mean, in the beginning, he us all you knew is that he was a stormtrooper that wanted to get out. We didn't know from the beginning that he was in the sanitation department. That was just some dumb. Right. Animal. It comes at the end, but that ruins everything else oh, that yeah, happened in the it movie. Does. You but I'm, I mean with him. in the beginning, it was an interesting character because it's like, oh wow, it's a stormtrooper wanting to do yeah, something yeah. different. That was and possibly having force right. powers, right? And possibly, yeah. So I wouldn't give those L's though. That's what I'm saying, Enzo. Yeah, he was it was an incredible storyline that just completely got destroyed. They had yeah. everything there. It was it would have been amazing, probably would have been some of the best Star Wars ever. Wow. Probably, yeah, I agree. And but they he ended up focusing on Ray instead because that's like, oh, by the way, this is supposed to be Ray's movie, so we have to, you know, sideline Finn. And it's like, yeah, but we like Finn. <laughs> and the thing about it is, when you go with the marketing, right? They made it seem like it was Finn. Yeah, you know I mean, Finn. he's on the poster holding the lightsaber, and it's like, oh yep. yeah, okay. You and get that you big movie. Hmm? You get that big clip of you know him taking off the helmet, and it's like there's a black For, guy. And oh like, yeah, and it's a, and there's like, awakening, and I'm like okay, and then you show him lighting up fighting Kylo, and then I'm just like okay, sounds interesting, mm -hmm. and then watch the movie, it's like a total flip. Yeah, they could have both had Jedi Force powers, and they could have both been with Luke in um, you know Episode Eight Absolutely. over on that planet. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, they decided not to do it. Absolutely. But, 
where Luke was training them to us to be a Jedi. You know what I mean? And I don't think you, I don't think you take Luke out of the first movie. You have him in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it should have been Luke catching the lightsaber in the woods. Right, and he's training them from the start or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, Did you see Mark Hamill? He said he was part of the script read, and when he saw that part, he's like, "Oh, here I go," because I've been missing for the whole part. This is mm-hmm. me now. That's my part, and it didn't actually turn out. Mm-hmm. Skip says he got cooked by Ben and Ray, had to defend him, and then wakes up in the start of the Last Jedi as a bigger joke. Bubble, Bubble Boy, Boy leaking water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yep. his head in the first scene. Whack, man. Yep. Teased them to be lead. Then made him a simp instead. Facts. At least, at least he beat up Phasma. Mm. I mean, what, what, are we, Phasma, what are we doing here? Even we Phasma retelling? too, though. Even Phasma too, though. When you seen that silver armor, I was like, "Oh, that's gonna be fire." She did yeah. nothing. Yeah. And he basically beats her because he, what he screws up. He turns around and does like a Han Solo versus Boba Fett. That's in the second one, but in the first one, oh. he holds a gun to her head, which her suit can withstand blast fire and she's like doing whatever he wants her to do and i was like what 17 true or false crosshair is in the upper half of star wars names i say true he's he's climbing man he's sounds like a star wars name it sounds like a star wars name bro grogu yoda fennec shand there's a lot of names out there but crosshair does the it's up there Crosshair sounds like a super villain name. No, it is not in the upper. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a Star Wars name at all. I think he's going to become, I think it's going to be a name more well known as his story develops, especially in this current season of Bad Batch. After what we just saw in the third episode with him, his development has so much potential. He's going to become a major fan favorite. And then I think over time, as you mentioned, Star Wars. The names that come up are, are going to include him. No, yeah. when I say the name, I just mean like the way that it sounds. So if you're saying it sounds like a villain name, or and that makes it so that it's not eligible, that's not my question. I'm just saying like creatively, some people are called Max Rebo, mm-hmm. and some people are called Luke Skywalker, and then and Sheev Palpatine, and then there's <laughs> Crosshair, and I, I love it. I- Hey, look, we had a clone named Oddball. I mean, you know. <laughs> they, only, they only called him Crosshair because the, the name Bullseye was already taken. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there a Crosshair in, the, in Marvel? Crossbones. Sounds mm-hmm. like that. No, you know what I mean? yeah. yeah, sounds like that to me. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I don't hate it. I'm not going to sit here and say I hate well, it. No, I like the name because they're a yeah. bunch of mercenaries and they all have, like, code names. But mm-hmm. it's... We got Felicity joining the crew. Hello, hello. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hello. We're at question number 17. I'm going to ask you the important ones, okay? Because you, okay, you missed cool. a couple of uh, cool ones. Sorry Snoop, about that. <laughs> if Snoop Dogg were cast and his character was in a scene drinking milk, would it be drinking that green milk or that blue milk on the left side? Oh, this is supposed to be a cool question? <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! All right. Wow. <laughs> Skip. I didn't no. answer that question, so I got you. I got you answer. I got no. you answer. Mm-hmm. He will be drinking the milk that's green. He smokes the green, so he's gonna drink the green. Mm-hmm. See, that's I what you were supposed to say. It's not the same thing, though, Kate. I, I don't think it's the same thing. Oh, it can be. No, it can't be. But you gotta <laughs> yeah. to it. So, how okay. how open would you be if they revealed, hey, there's actually this clone youngling this whole entire time, and you know, Star Wars. A clone youngling. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm. I I really don't have a good answer for this one. <laughs> so you would accept it? You would reject it immediately? Like, where would you stand? Uh, I mean, we've already got Omega. I think that's enough. You think she's got force abilities? I hope not. Not really, because I would be totally out on the show if she turns out to be force sensitive. (laughs) Okay, okay. And then the next one was... Oh, this was a good one. You think Star Wars has too much politics? 
No, it's part of the world building. Um, I mean, as long as they're not like trying to force in real world politics, I have absolutely no problem with it. Okay, okay. What's going on, JG Shaolin? Oh, snap. She gives the best answers. Felicity, nice. <laughs> I was in Star Wars Night at the Kings game on Monday. I brought a green milk smoothie. I'm a fan now. That's interesting. <laughs> Number. Did it taste eight. good? <laughs> R2-D2, is Luke Skywalker's best friend? No. False. False. He, he's more he's more Anakin's best friend. If you go yeah. off of Star Wars and stuff. I false. would say that Luke Skywalker he, like, is, is R2's best friend. But yeah. Luke, his best friend is Han. So this is false. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, it, it wasn't Han. until like the... Uh, it wasn't until the second movie... When, it was really just the second movie when R2 went on his trip with him to Dagobah. And, it, and even in the third movie, you know, he was back with 3PO again. So they're not so really they, best okay, friends. But they, don't treat, they don't treat droids as friends. They treat droids as droids. They don't view them as... They're they servants. never say buddy. Yeah, they're they, don't, they don't talk to the droids. Pets. Yeah, but there's... I mean, even... even um, I mean, C-3PO is, a, is treated more as a servant. R2, not really. I mean, even Paul, as friendly as 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 fu- as close as he was to uh, that ball droid, whatever it was called, BB-8. 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 He still treated BB-8 as a droid. I mean, he didn't. He was like friendly with them, but he wasn't. I don't see them. They don't view their droids as friends. They're just appliances. Well, not even. I mean, but, but I think, well, especially too. like Anakin. Anakin doesn't. He 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 respects droids. If we discount the sequel trilogy, Han was Luke's best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I do think that Luke had a little bit more caring for um, R2 than just a droid. Oh, no. right? Yeah. You know what R- I mean? That's not what we're asking. We're asking best friend, and it's false. Mm-hmm. No. no. Uh, I have spoken. May <laughs> not have been his best friend, but he did think R2 was a friend. Yeah, Luke Skywalker's best friend was Biggs. Huh? Uh, yeah. yeah, growing up, yeah, growing up, yeah. But later on, it was it Han. becomes Han that expanded Han. universe. What? What's going on? Who's Biggs? Big Star Glider. Big Star, the, big big star, the dude Star-Star. in the first. Star-Star. He bites the dust in the Death Star battle. He's got yeah. the mustache. Yeah, all right. He was the one that Luke was shooting wombats together. It, it, yeah. it went to training. The deleted together. scene. No, it was in no. The they movie. talk about it. They he meets up in the hangar. Yeah. Right oh yeah, the, the, the guy he's like, oh you, yeah, and we yeah. we just go, oh, okay, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I'm loosely familiar. I can't put a face to it, but I do remember the scenes. I'm not a big Star Wars guy here. Uh, the nerd. guy with the porn stash. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Lando is Luke Skywalker's blank best friend. He's so a, his a, best friend is Han. We said right. Associates. Uh, they're not. Yeah, he's not a friend. Lando is like fifth down the line. Yeah, I'd say if because he's got to be somewhat on the list there because he does venture off with Lando mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. go find the star, on. you know, you know, with uh, they oh, were searching right. for the blade yeah. from Rise of Skywalker and they were mm-hmm. searching for all that stuff. Um, we don't get to see it, unfortunately, but Lando does mention it, but, you know, absolutely. Not only that, in even Return of the Jedi, right? They devised that plan to save Han Solo, so they had yeah. us, they spent a lot of time together. For sure. Yeah. So what I said fifth the best friend. Do you say third or fourth best? Where are you going with it, Onzo? I'd say third after R2. Shoot. Felicity? Are we sure that the pound sign is not a hashtag and we can't just say black best friend? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, take, yeah. First black yeah. best friend. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that we know of. Come on. Oh, for now. <laughs> Does Admiral Akbar count? Like, he's a person Ooh. of color. <laughs> <laughs> he's a person of species. What are you talking about? <laughs> Whenever I hear people talk about that, the first thing that pops in my head is the scene from Chasing Amy, where the guy's talking about Darth Vader. He's like, he's the blackest mf in the galaxy. And what happens? They take off his helmet, and he's across the old white guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh bad question i guess that's cool yeah. 
We can get number 20. <laughs> I believe Tales of the Jedi would be perfect for daily releases. Do you agree? Yeah. Like, so make that could work. Short, short stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know why these companies don't like, or they, they got a YouTube channel that they probably want to big up, release on your YouTube, you know? Utilize as long it. as there's utilize. no more Ahsoka. I don't need any more Ahsoka in Tales of the Jedi. <laughs> I'll take I'll take Ahsoka in Tales of the Jedi, but like give me one episode of Ahsoka and five more of unique other people. Mm-hmm. Right. Like you got like what thousands, how it was a thousand over thousands of Jedi in the back in the days of, of the Republic, and we only follow like probably five or four. Every time they do this stuff, Filoni, Jaded fanboy. No, nah, it's me? too much. It's too much work. They're not going to be able to produce that much. For for what? I mean, well, the same amount of work, right? They'll do six episodes that are about fifteen minutes. Yeah, oh, one comes I, on Monday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday. That way, each episode can get the attention it deserves, and we'll be satisfied because we're getting another one tomorrow. Hmm. I would think that it's way better. The amount of uh, content and coverage, not just from us video guys, but just articles, the Twitter <laughs> discussion, you need your things to be relevant for a long, sustained period, a period of time. Daily releases may be the solution. Yeah, Man. but at the same time, the Tales of the Jedi have various themes and styles to them. So if you release the first one and it's like, oh, if this is what it's going to be like, I'm not going to tune in tomorrow. Whereas if it's all at once, you can just fast forward and go, oh, okay, I like this story. I like this story. Because you're not going to like all the tales. You're just going to like certain ones. Whereas if it's daily, it's like, oh, I have to wait the next day to see if I'm going to be interested in that particular storyline. Yeah. You're, you're worried about turning people off. I'm not. Yeah. It, it can go either way. Because it, it's, you know, going back to things coming out weekly, the way, you know, it used to be. We all got very spoiled with the world of netflix where everything mm-hmm. was all out at once and everyone's binge watching everything personally i missed weekly episodes of things and i'm glad that that's come back in a lot of ways because it gives me something to look forward to i spend that week thinking about what could be and you, you get these theories and everybody you know you discuss with friends and figure out you know oh what could possibly happen so i like things like bad batch and then get in a week now and like, then, okay. and then get- and then get disappointed when 90% of the things that you thought of, they, they didn't even bother even addressing. No. When it comes to that, I'm, I'm always like on the fence. Sometimes I like waiting the week, you know, for anticipation. Can't wait to see what happens. But there's some shows where I'm like, man, I wish I could just binge watch this whole series right now. So I'm 50 oh, yeah. 50 with it. I'm like, I'm, I'm okay with both ways. Like, I'll give you an example Kenobi should mm-hmm. have been all at once because that was agree. like a movie yeah, yeah that's different yeah i can yeah. see that yeah I, I will never agree that six episodes should all happen on one day what's the point of dividing them into episodes if mm-hmm. kenobi was a movie and they released it on one day movie. yes mm-hmm. because you have well, to- it, it, it's it's because this uh, sorry dude, but it's because this with all the shows we've been watching recently just in general like let's say the past three years when we get to the finale, because all right, you're building up these shows weekly to get to this epic. You want to start off good, and you want to have a good ending too. And most of these shows, they start off okay or average, and they just end horribly. And at the end of it, you're like, "Wow, they might put out something else like this and make me wait week to week again for another mediocre bad ending." Like they they key it's it's a pattern. And I, and I agree, do it. I do agree with Anzo. There is some shows nowadays that need to be released all at once so you don't waste people's time for week to week. Yeah, you like can't, the Hulk. You can't deny Netflix uh, impact on the marketplace because clearly Disney knows that they have to cater to people that want the binge model. That's why they are starting a lot of these shows with two episodes so they yeah. can compete you know, with the minutes watched mm. that the, you know, mm-hmm. Netflix shows have. So, I mean, it's the, the world has changed. Netflix has changed things. Yeah, I agree. And, and the thing mm-hmm. is, Chill, uh, a movie is written differently than a show that's done yeah. episodically. 
So mm-hmm. if it's an ep- if it's six episodes, you're writing an episodic series differently than you would a six hour movie. Let's mm-hmm. get to the Netflix. The root of that is that they acquired like so. Let's go back to the year 2012. They had Lost and they had Prison Break and all these shows that people may have not watched during their TV run. People get Netflix and they binge them because all of the episodes have already happened. So everyone got their office, Grey's Anatomy, and all the well, Grey's Anatomy is still going. But you get what I'm trying to say here. Yeah. That's the Let's inception see. of this binge. Yeah. Let's see, chill. And I'm glad you dropped it up. We're Breaking Bad. I watched it all <laughs> back to back at once on Netflix. Now I wish I was there watching it weekly. See, I wish I was watching Breaking Bad weekly, but I, I didn't because I was like, eh, I was iffy on it at first. I don't really care about drug shows like that that much. But after watching all the seasons back to back, I'm like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it was and it was some good stuff. And Anzo, you better mute yourself next time you sneeze. It's like the third time Same. you did that. Same for yeah, but the, 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 the point me. is choice. The, ch- the point is you have the choice to watch it the way that you want to watch it. And that's what legitimately what people want is I, if either I want to watch it all at once or I want to watch it week to week. That's what really people want. Mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Next quick, let me actually read some of these live chats to see what you guys were all talking about. Waffle House Wendy says, is Gendy Tartokovsky's Star Wars the best animated series ever? Huh? Oh, that that was the the two D yeah, animated Clone Wars, Clone Wars that came out prior to the Clone Wars we all know. Yeah, um, I yeah, watched I, those yeah. weekly on StarWars.com. Those <laughs> were meant to fill in the time gap between Episode two and three before three came out in theaters. And they're great, by the way. If if you've never seen them, check them out. They were literally five minute episodes. Yeah, and- I I agree because. That show is how Jedi's and Sith. That's how their powers should be. That is how they exactly should be. Mace Windu was that was that episode when he came and wrecked all those droids with just his mm-hmm. hands and the Force. Epic. That was epic. That's how Jedi's and Sith need to be with their powers. That's how they need to be. Seriously though, imagine a show that dropped a new episode every single day of the year it would be the biggest show in the world. Mm-hmm. Only if it was good. Soap yeah, operas. If, it's if, it's good, you, if it's good, you can. Is anyone into soap operas which have daily episodes? It used to be a long years. time ago. <laughs> used, to, gen, used to. General Hospital was the GOAT back in the day. Passions. Days of our lives. Oh, I know Passions. I used to watch Passions too. Felicity? Jay, did you miss out on greatness, man? Jay, Jay, Jay. No, I didn't. Yeah, oh, it's been years. Greatness. I used to watch, uh, you know, uh, Days of Our Lives, uh, yeah. Guiding Light, you know, all that type of stuff. Mm. Binging outside. should be killed. Bury it with the past. Hawk says he's listening in today. Who I used will... to watch Dallas and those type of the nighttime ones, but not the Dynasty. Dynasty because <laughs> of uh, Alexis. I used to love Alexis. What was that a daily show though? No, that was the nighttime. Uh, those were the weekly. nighttime. Yeah, mm. they were weekly and they were the nighttime. Let's get back on track. I think we were on question 21 here. Is there a Star Wars experience or an attraction that you would recommend? Hmm. Uh, yes. Going back in time and seeing the original Star Wars trilogy for the you first time. You can't do that. <laughs> that would be the only one I would recommend. You could tell me, oh, you got to see the movies in 3D or something, but you can't tell me to time travel. Any, anyone ever been to the Galaxy's Edge? Anyone ever been done something? I mm. haven't been. I, I was on the original Star Tours in, in Disney before it changed. Um, so I remember that. And that was a cool ride. That was definitely a cool experience. Um, when it comes to the movies, though, now in ways to watch them, I did see it. I saw Phantom Menace in 3D in theaters, and it was weird. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> definitely strange. But what I do recommend is checking out especially the original trilogy on 4K Blu-ray. It's it, it's phenomenal. The the transfer they did and the work they put in to upscaling this was an amazing job and it's at this point yes, I don't ever stream the Star Wars movies. I put the hard disc in and I watch these full like 4K editions of them and they're gorgeous. Is the 4K edition the extended version or the original? 
It's the extendeds. Oh, well, then there's no point in watching. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm glad I asked that but, question. I would have never gotten the answer. Anzel? I say experience as, like, see it in theater, man, because when we going through the pandemic and the theaters were mm-hmm. opening back up, they showed Empire Strikes back in the theater, and I was able to take my son to go see it. He's 24. Nice. But was it a Cineplex? It in theaters. No, it was in Scotia. Huh. Uh, yeah, well, no, it was a Cineplex, yeah. Yeah, they are. They're the same company. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay, cool. forget the 4K version. Get the widescreen edition of the original three movies. <laughs> there you go. Not the extended edition. I have the VHS. <laughs> Bro, I would go and say on streaming, if you watch The Mandalorian, turn on the Japanese dub subtitles. Now, you know, not for the first watch through. Your first watch through, go check it out in English. But if you ever rewatch it, it is so cool. These Japanese people. And, and Din wears a mask anyway, so it doesn't even feel weird. You just get to see people talking in Japanese. Nice. Hmm. Hearing Din Jaren say, Omaiwa. Omaiwa. <laughs> or because since a lot of people probably haven't, if you want to get the most ridiculous Star Wars experience, you have to watch the Star Wars Christmas special. You have to. Never have, never will. <laughs> that oh. is oh. an experience. That is an experience in and of itself. Sounds like torture. Yeah. One <laughs> oh, it is. It's just watching going. I did I, okay. The animated clips of the droids and the animated clip with Boba Fett are good. The rest of it is like no idea what the hell is going on mm-hmm. in war. Star Chaser: The Legend of Orin is the best non-Star Wars movie ever. Mm. Mm, who likes, last who likes, was pretty good. Holiday special is a rite of passage. <laughs> yeah. It's not for everybody. Twenty-two. <laughs> Why is it a Death Star? And it's not a death moon because they said it. It looks like a moon. We'd be having moon wars if that was called a death moon. Well, I mean, because actual stars in space are they? They're they're round. It's just a round star and it's very bright. Death star sounds better. Yeah, it does sound better. <laughs> it does sound better. I was better. gonna say the same reason War Machine sounded better than uh, than uh, P- uh, Iron Patriot. Iron Patriot. It pulled better. Yeah. Mm. Probably why it just sounded better. Yeah. 23, mm-hmm. Book of Jango Fett. Does that sound like it's a film? Like it's a series? Is it animated? Is it a special one-time Disney Plus? Is it a comic book? Is it a novel? The Book of Jango Fett. It's, novel. It's, it sounds like something that novel. shouldn't even be a thing because his clones are cooler than him. So. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I don't, after the Book of Boba Fett, I don't want the Book of Jango Fett. I'd rather Fett. watch the, the Book of Rex and Cody. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Two novels, two we don't even care, and then uh, what do you say, Matt? Is it a uh, book? I'd, Is it a an... based off of just what we have currently? I'd say a series. You know, we had Book of Boba Fett. Do book you know of what Jango the problem Fett. is? You're missing an option. Book of Book of the Book of Django Fat Fat. Does that sound like a film, series, special, comic, or novel, or a complete waste of time? Uh, oh, that's, that's, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> they're, they're... That's impossible. There is a video game that's already technically a oh, book. Really? It's not canon, but there's Bounty Hunter. Good. Yeah, Bounty Hunter. Great game. Hard to control, but great game. It, it, sound, it sounds like a treatment that should be thrown in the trash. How's that? They tried that. It's called Star Killer Base. <laughs> the, the, the Death Star, Death Moon thing. Yeah. Yeah. Once known as Ilum, where Padawans would get their star- lightsaber oh, crystal. Oh, God. Death Moon. I knew that. That was the first episode we saw the Wookiee Genji. That was yep. the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Look at me. Um, <sighs> Steve says, ouch. Question number 24 of okay. 30, 25. At what age would you introduce younglings to lightsabers? How old was Genji in that uh, episode? That was like a 10 year old. Yeah. Yeah, they were pretty. They probably hit like at least double digits, maybe 10, 11 years old. About that, yeah. In America, I, you can take your kid to shoot at eight years old, right? I don't know. I'm I'm gonna I'm start him at five. No, I no, th- no, 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 okay. I think it would eight be, or nine, eight or nine. I nine? think it would be a by it would be a young, it would be a, a by case basis. I'm sure some younglings would be more attuned to it. So they would just go, okay, Bobby here, even though he's eight years old, he's more attuned to it. So yeah. we'll train him earlier. Whereas it others doesn't sound like Jedi have these hard and fast rules. 
except for only a set of deals and absolutes but like they they would be like oh you're not ready yet yeah you, you're ready yeah. now like a uh, prime example grogu right he's literally 50 as they say he's still a baby yeah so you have you have to wait until like year maybe 100 to get started you let him use a lightsaber he's still a baby no, it's happening in season three a lightsaber it's coming yeah. in season three when, when he's old enough to not want to, you know, put in his mouth and, you know, nibble on it. Because yeah, he's going to eat it. Yeah, like, he's going to give him a lightsaber. Yeah, so just imagine how, like, and Jade is right, it's a case-by-case basis. Because yeah, someone like Grogu, I wouldn't give Grogu a lightsaber at his current age. He's a baby. He's I wouldn't him. give Grogu a lightsaber ever. But Luke did offer him the lightsaber at the end, and he had a choice to pick the lightsaber or to go back with Lando, right? So maybe... He would have started his training with the lightsaber. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. Luke is they like should. what a backyard wrestler is for the Jedi. He wasn't trained yeah. in the Academy. He wasn't there in Coruscant. He he doesn't know the correct way. So yeah, sure, he gave him a lightsaber or an option of a lightsaber. L- Luke doesn't count. Luke is not my standard. <laughs> yeah, I, I guarantee you someone like Yoda, who probably would have trained Grogu since they're the same species, would have probably not gave him a lightsaber at the age of 50. Because he knows he's going to live that long. He's going to take his time with Grogu because he's a yeah. baby. But at the same time, who's to say that there was actually any crystals in the lightsaber? Mm. It could have just easily have True. just been the lightsaber itself. It wasn't actually powered. Just the hilt. It. Yeah. It was the hilt. Kind of like it'll put on the mantle, kind of like, you know. And there were some pretty young kids in Attack of the Clones that Yoda was training. When we see that one one scene, he's got oh, all they the... had sabers, didn't they? They had. They had sabers, but I don't know if they were like full legit sabers or were they training ones or who knows? Yeah, they like the equivalent of Vulcan, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You got to have good uh, manual dexterity to, mm. to use a lightsaber. So I would say probably pre teens. Yeah. I would agree. 26. How safe to drink is the rain over on Camino? <laughs> Bro, I mean, it's it not, was, it's always raining. It's not cool. toxic, so maybe the reason it's always raining is because of some sort of toxic chemical reaction happening on the clouds where it goes, Oh, we can't hold this water for much, we got to get rid of it, or mm. opposite, maybe because it's always running, not enough time to collect gunk. Well, we never explored all of Camino, like maybe that part of the planet is just always like that. <laughs> <laughs> Because we every time we go to Camino, we only go to the cloning facility. Like we haven't explored true more of the planet besides that spot. So maybe that's I'm more sure the Camino ones were probably using the uh the the some, like hydroelectric electric power or something like that. They were probably trying to uh yeah. you know you use use the weather to, to work for them in some way. Right. You think that species drink though? That's the thing. Those Caminos, no ones with their long neck, they're not very, you know, humans are like 70% water, something mm-hmm. astronomical like that. Caminos are maybe they're 10% water. Oh. Well, if they eat, they probably need to drink. So, you know. Okay, Rube, how long was Crosshair stuck on that planet for? Five weeks? Five months? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's, he was he said there. like five rotations? He said 32 rotations. So or a twenty twelve would be a year, correct? So that's thirty. That's thirty two years. No. Ro- rotations <laughs> according to what planet? A smaller planet would rotate around the sun, or closer to the to to whatever star is. Camino, and its thirty two rotations may not be that many. We can look maybe. at Omega's age. She didn't age much. She maybe looks a like one year older, maybe. But they were still like, picked up prior right? to that. Yeah, one out of time. What did Felicity say? She's still older than the other clones, right? Yes, yeah. she didn't have the uh, extended aging. Yeah, but I just mean from season one to season two, how much did Omega age? About one year, it looks like to me. Because with the cloning process, you can give someone extended aging, you can stop their aging, keep them at a certain age. Mm. 32 rotations, that's a weird one. I, I remember seeing, and you guys can confirm, Coruscant is just like Earth. It's 365. Uh, years a year, right? Yeah, no. roughly. Yeah. Roughly, I think it was basically he was he was stuck there for about a month, and then was picked up. But now it's been 
all together maybe like about a year or so however long has passed away because he was in rehabilitation for a long time and was just put back into uh field operations yeah look we're overcomplicating it it is safe to drink because he was stuck there for a long time and he had to drink the water <laughs> therefore rainwater and camino is safe i'd and say yeah yeah sure well, no no it, it's safe once you bottle it see drinking mm-hmm. drinking rainwater isn't that good but when you bottle it apparently it's somehow safer Steve says that it is a month, 32 rotations. Okay. We're we thinking of the word revolution. To, uh, purify it first. One rotation on Camino is 27 hours? Hmm. You, you tell me. You put the question mark next to it. <laughs> like if you got a second tab open and you and you got the Wikipedia to confirm that, I'll take it. Uh, Waffle House Wednesday says, are Bendus more powerful than Jedis? Wendy, you're asking a lot of questions. When will Star Wars uh, abolish slavery like it's got nothing to do with this show. And you're going to keep us here for three hours if we answer every Lord, single one of these. Are, are we going <laughs> droid lives matter? Is that what we're doing? You remember that? <laughs> droid lives don't matter. <laughs> that was a solid question. That was, an, that was the best part of this show that's ever happened. Well, 27. <laughs> what lesson can Padme learn from Cassian Andor's mom? Mama Andor, fight till the end. <laughs> hmm. I can I have an answer, but I better not say it. I want to hear it. <laughs> you can be the first to answer, Jada Fanboy. What can Padme learn? How to treat a man. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> if a guy kills a, a a village full of people, you should leave him. <laughs> I don't know. Just you know notice some red flags, I guess. I don't <laughs> Have some red flags, maybe. I don't know. Hey, love is a powerful thing. Don't lose the will to live. You take care of your kids, or else they'll turn into rotten people who slay Ben in his sleep. I don't mm-hmm. know. What do you think about this one, Anzo? I have no answer. I stay as far away from Andor as possible. So Ouch. I can't <laughs> over that one. <laughs> Bruh. At least I got a laughter from Tim. <laughs> Next question of 33 Burning Star Wars questions. How was Liberty supposed to die? Like, what did she imagine? Did she think it would be thunderous applause? Or did she think there'd be like a, a sad, the empire, a galactic empire? And she's, well, well, you know, you know, you know, you know. Well, there was a thunderous applause. That's why she said it, right? So maybe she expected people to be upset and fight more, I guess. Are we talking like Liberty Liberty or like is that a person in Star Wars we're talking about? Name Liberty. She's talking about the how the Republic died and, and and an empire is coming into play and a dictator is running everything now. She's okay, so she's she was shocked actually. that the majority of people were just so accepting of it and just let it happen. Yeah. Like everything she's fought for, everything her and other senators have tried to help the galaxy by changing ways, it just it all just went away at that point. Like everything she did was for nothing. And she had the sickest line in the Star Wars prequels. Hmm? Well, most of the time, I mean, we we usually are giving it up ourselves. You know, just like just like what he was saying, you know, it's it's not necessarily because of a war that we lose our liberty. It's because we've given it to somebody else and let them take it from us. Right. They'll convince you that what you're doing is noble. It'll save the children, yada yada. It always it always dies that way, Padme. I'm sorry. It's never just like a a swoop of just evil. It's always like in the the path to good deeds is paved by bad intentions or something like that. There's, there's a line like that. The road the road of the road to good deeds is paved with bad intentions. Bad, yep, yeah, yep. Boom. That's so so yeah. Liberty is supposed to die that way. Twenty nine in the thirty five years. After the Battle of Yavin. So now we're in the sequel era ter- territory. How many Wookiees were killed for their fur? Over on Kashyyyk, they were taken care of. I remember Yoda was there during Order 66. He got rid of, he got, took, he took care of himself. He's like, oh, Chewbacca, go take care of some things. All of those Wookiee, the first, the second episode of Rebels, you saw they were still under the oppression of the Empire. So mm-hmm. since then, Wookiees, like, hey, look, you know, you know those Trandoshans that really hate the Wookiees and have beef with them? I'm sure a couple of them, 
have sold Wookiees for fur or killed mm-hmm. and sold for fur. I think that I think that the number is in the thousands. Wookiees think- after yeah. In Book of Boba Fett, didn't one of them bring a Wookiee pelt as like was an that offering? Oh, was that that's what made him go mad in the little uh, game? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Black Crescenton. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They made Black Crescenton go nuts. That was see, mm-hmm. it's in the canon. See, like that's just a commonplace, and it resonated with him. It was like, oh, these guys, I I'm familiar with the the, mm. the fur that you guys wear. Mm. Look, it happened. I don't see that many because there's a easy there's easier creatures to get fur from and wookies ain't exactly gonna go down easy so i remember in the jedi in the force awakens video game there were some wookies who were jailed you had to go save them these this group have been slaughtered so maybe there's not even that many left well i don't the because i do agree with jay like something like what's those mammoth thingies on banthas yeah banthas those those yeah. sound like easy fur to get. Mm-hmm. Wookiees, mm-hmm. I know what Chill was trying to bring up, that they was, I'm not sure if this is still canon to an extent, but they was used as slaves to help build the Death Star, like lift heavy things because they're super strong and stuff. They was, mm-hmm. you know, it was used for that. Mm-hmm. So the only thing they was valuable for was possibly labor. slaves. That's it. Yeah, they were more yeah. useful as, sla- as labor than they would be as, you know, coat material. <laughs> I mean, oh, I thanks, Second Street Marvel. Marvel. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> they're only they're only viable if they come in variety. Because I think only Wookies mm-hmm. have like black and brown fur. Like, let's say there's like I don't know a Wookie that was a freaking rainbow colored. Somebody's definitely going to want that to, as to wear as a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a rainbow Wookie. <laughs> it's an Irish Wookie. And then he ripped the Trandoshan's arm off. The beef is real. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 35 years. I'm saying 1,000 Wookiees were killed for food. um, Mm. That was so funny when they tried to jump him in the middle of the street. They had, like, knives and stuff. And Mm. (laughs) all of a sudden, he wasn't getting stabbed. Yeah, Ewoks. It's easier to get Ewoks for than it would be... uh, what nah, is dated Ewoks are tough. Don't downplay Ewoks. Yeah, they'll, they'll hunt you down and eat you. Oh, yeah. please. Don't right. What are they going to do? Throw rocks at you. Give me a break. Only right. a beautiful so, woman could. That uh, dumbass movie. Ewok. That those dumbass Ewoks invalidated stormtroopers beyond repair. I hate that. Jaded, they was already what? at the first movie, to be fair. They, they can't. No, they weren't. They, they, were they, they, they missed. They can't shoot. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> You had Obi Wan going when they when they got to the uh, Jawas uh, transporter. They go only only stormtroopers are that precise. The yeah. reason the reason they let the reason the stormtroopers mess is because Darth Vader goes. I let them go because there's a tracker on their ship. No, no, no. They, they, were, were, established, were, were. they were established as efficient fighters. It wasn't until the third movie where they had to figure out how are we going to get the Ewoks to win against the Stormtroopers. They dumbed down the Stormtroopers beyond repair. Jaded. They, they're literally that scene when uh, they was breaking layout at that hallway. Mm-hmm. Look at them. They're technically cornered. Technically cornered. And yeah. none of them not, none of them didn't even gra- graze any of them. They didn't hit okay. them. Okay. These, these guys mm-hmm. can't shoot. They suck. Okay. In the beginning of the movie, when the stormtroopers enter the ship with Leia, the the rebels have them bottlenecked in the hallway. They come in, all of the rebels are dead, and only three stormtroopers are down. The <sighs> rebels had them bottlenecked. The the rebels should have slaughtered the tr- the stormtroopers coming into the ship. JD, you only know three you know what I call that? were down. Only three stormtroopers were down, and all the rebel soldiers were dead. Superior fighting skills. I have spoken. You want to know what I call yeah, that? For the plot you know, yeah, 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 you know what I call that? I call that okay. This one the plot wants to make sense. Mm-hmm. And then and then you know, I to oh, look, I'm gonna say it. Luke and them have to get some plot armor. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly where it's going. The amount of plot, time it was intersecting the plot armor and them needing to sell Ewoks as toys. Like that the amount it. of time it was originally going to be Kashyyyk. Uh, remember the part when Luke and Leia swung across that thing? Mind you, I'm not. Everyone's not a perfect shot when things are moving, but you know, if things are moving. You gotta, 
you things was always gonna they be they want Darth Vader wanted them to escape. Try to understand that. Darth Vader wanted Luke, Han, and Leia to escape to lead them to the rebel base. Hey, hence hey. why the stormtroopers consistently missed them. Because if they <laughs> shot them, Darth Vader would have killed the stormtrooper who shot them. Jaded is talking to you like a parent who's very disappointed you will go to your room and think about what you did. Yes. Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, all right, and now this is this is canon. Obi-Wan. Mm-hmm. No, no. Vader. Mm -hmm. let's, go, let's go off the Obi-Wan show, which is now canon. Mm. Vader in that show had the opportunity to find more Jedis and kill them off all at once. Okay, you're talking about a show where Darth Vader it was an idiot. Yeah, the, okay. I mean that's that, different. That's different. That, that, that's bad writing. You're not. You can't use Darth Vader being an idiot as canon. Look, the stormtroopers are just written as dumb dumbs because that's. So was so was Darth Vader. Darth Vader. There's there's a fire. There's a fire. Darth Vader goes. Well, I guess yeah, I, I agree. They, you, you, you have to write them as what a dumb dumb. The stormtroopers are dumb dumbs. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not like intelligent combatants. The clone yeah, troopers are clone the, troopers the, are, are are superior combatants. But in a new hope, they weren't inferior. They were they were they were an elite for the first act of the movie. I agree. After that, no. Okay, act, let's yeah. get on to question 30. <laughs> of all the fools who have ever fooled, who is the biggest fool that Kenobi has interacted with in his books? Anakin. Anakin. Anakin, by far. <laughs> Anakin. I told him I have the high ground, should have listened. <laughs> uh, yeah. one, that is not the reason he was a fool because how does how does a height advantage matter when you have the force ask, ask I, mean, I agree i agree but he told him hey don't do it don't do it and guess what he did it he effed around and he found out mm. Anzo, who's the biggest fool that kenobi interacted with um yeah i would say anakin i'll Ouch. go with these guys Matt, who's the biggest fool? <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's Anakin. Good. I need another answer to switch I, I, things up. He's he's interacted with some interesting people. Um, I love this character, but he's definitely made his foolish choices. Hondo. Oh, Obi Wan has Hondo dealt Anaka? with really? Hondo Anaka. Yeah. <laughs> Who is a very clever character, but has also made some pretty poor choices that have led to some crazy stuff. Especially when Obi Wan had to work with them. And remember, remember when Obi Wan that episode where they like changed his face and he was pretending to be a bounty hunter and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like they, he got to be on the inside scoop of all this stuff, and I I think he met uh, quite a few different fools <laughs> in that world. He interacted with a lot, but I'm waiting for one. Actually, we got it right here. Jar Jar Binks is a fool. That's probably the correct Jar -Jar answer. Binks. Were you going to say that, Felicity? Uh, no, I, I think it does have to be Anakin because his foolishness basically uh, killed the rest of the galaxy uh, and they fell to the Empire. So I think it has to be Anakin. The and thing is, though, Darth Anakin did what he said he was going to do. He was talking to Padme in Attack of the Clones like, we should get the people and they should discuss what's going on. And then she goes, that's what politics is. He said, we should make them just the, come to an agreement. He said something like that, right? Watch yeah. it. 30 years later, he think, he does exactly what he was saying he was going to do 20 years later. So, yes, he got Andy what he became, wanted. And he became Palpatine's stooge. And he so, brought balance to the force, too. Eventually. Oh. Yeah, it took, it him, took, it took a him a while. But he was still a fool. That, 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 was, mm. that, was, that was the beginning of it, you know, on Mustafar. I like so, the but, answer in the chat. But to to be fair, to yeah. be fair, because I think Anakin was a fool. Obi Wan was an even bigger fool for letting Anakin live in Obi Wan. Oh no! Please stop bringing up that show. You know, Anakin does has his faults, but Obi Wan Obi Wan knew for sure Anakin deserved to be. A Jedi Knight on the council, or a Jedi Knight to, to get the rank, and Obi Wan just sitting there, like not even fighting for his own student, like you know, encouraging him as you know you should. Still not, you don't need to 
uh, gas him up, but like encourage him. You, you know. Well, if we're gonna go by that, then a young Princess Leia is one of the biggest fools he's ever had to deal with because <laughs> she was a pain in the ass. <laughs> not really. Uh, no, 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 not really. How about the Jedi Council? How do you? Because this question is only asking about one fool. Who do we give it to? Is it Yoda? They were all fooled equally. They were just going by the ways. I'm changing my answer to Obi. No, they were fooled, but they're not fools. There's a difference, though, Chell. I think they were fools, bro. They were like the guy next door giving them orders about what they should do for the war was the guy on really? you know, leading the really? opposite side. How are you not a fool? Oh, who's the Sith Lord? He's right under our nose. Go tell, Mace Windu, go tell Mace Windu to his, fa- to his face you think he's a fool and see how long that survives. Okay, so that's what. Okay, Mace is not the fool. Because okay, even like Mace, Mace was going to take her business. On it. He was on like, mm, I'm he was on the couch. In the so it was Yoda. Yoda was the biggest fool. That's why into exile I must go because he failed. You have. <laughs> they stuck to their their ways too strictly. They didn't right. they didn't bend at all, and that's what brought them. That was the downfall of the Jedi. So it the question was, is that foolish, and who's the leader? It's Yoda, isn't it? Hey, every every time Yoda was having his dream visions when he was dreaming of what of who the darkness could be a cloud just shows up randomly yeah. <laughs> the cloud go that Qui-Gon Jinn do was because they, the, the council had said don't train them and what did Qui-Gon do yeah I'm going to train them anyway mm-hmm. I mean there was all there was fools all around I mean, Obi-Wan is the one who trained him so you know <laughs> the question is about who did Obi-Wan interact with did he interact with himself is Obi-Wan the answer to this question well, no, but Obi Wan interacted with Qui Gon <laughs> Jinn, so I'm saying you could say that Qui Gon Jinn was also a fool for you know disobeying the 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 council's orders in the first place. Damn, you got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hawks <laughs> Holocron says it's canon. There's a lot of fools in the galaxy. Anakin killed the Emperor and turned the Jedi. I pity the fool. Yoda's very sus. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Matthew 15, 13, 14. Uh, that's, they copied the Bible. There you go. 31. Adam. Why does... <laughs> it's all crosshair. <laughs> you know, there are other members of the team. You do realize that. Yeah, but, but crosshair is on my thumbnail. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's the most interesting one. He's the, like that episode that we just had on Wednesday. Oh, I love with that some good episode. stuff. Right? Okay, there we go. See? Jade family, uh-huh. we need to watch these and, and appreciate them. Give me more episodes like that, and I would love the show. You know what? I couldn't help but think this, and 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 look, maybe I'm a bad Star Wars fan for saying this, but why are the best episodes of Star Wars shows the ones that don't feature the main characters? <laughs> because of poor st- poor storytelling and poor yeah. character development. That's yeah. why. Because, because they're they- actually putting effort. They're putting effort into these new mm-hmm. characters, and they're putting very minimal effort into the established ones. So we know that it's not a chip inside Crosshair to make him comply with the Empire. What is it? Is it good soldiers follow orders? Is that it? Is he like, I got to stick to the to the books? Is it out of spite? Hatred towards his brothers turn his back on him? Why would he do the things he does even when it's very clear you're fighting for the bad guys? The Separatists made a deal with Commander Cody and then you just shoot them anyways. That's not how things should go. Maybe he's this is this is a this is a stretch this is a this is a stretch what if he's trying to be the inside man except he hasn't really let anyone in on his thoughts he's that's trying what I, to work this from the inside that's what i was saying there could easily be a subplot they're trying to do with crosshair and we don't know where they're going with it i'm saying that I love I, it. I, that's what i'm expecting there's some type of subplot. We don't know what it is, and that's what the intriguing aspect of it is. We don't know what it is. Hopefully, they don't, you know, drop the ball or anything. But yeah, because in that episode too, like after he's done some horrible things, we see him alone in his barracks, and he feels awful about it. Yes. Like he's yeah, a, he's very conflicted. We but how do we know that? We're reading his. How face. Do we, did he actually say that? No, it's just the the sense I got from the the, fa- the look on his face, the way he's holding himself. It's what, what else could he be thinking? That's the thing. What else could he be thinking? There's he's a deep character that we have not explored yet, and I think we need to explore more. I, yeah, I, I agree. I, I I agree with you on that point. Um, I 
I find Crosshair interesting because I think he got screwed over by the rest of the Bad Batch. Um, you know, I, I'm not interested in Tech and Echo arguing over, you know, how, you know, this needs to go here or whatever. Uh, Wrecker is just, you know, a nothing character. Hunter is trying to be, you know, the, 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 the lone wolf to Omega's cub. Uh, that's not interesting. You know, the heist of the week for, for Sid to, you know, get out from under Sid's boot. That is not interesting. Crosshair is interesting, and they still haven't dug enough into, you know, mm-hmm. what is actually going on with him. Uh, the whole thing with the inhibitor chip, you know, is that, you know, what's going on here? They still need to clean up the the narrative behind that. Um, you know, the, the the show not being about the Bad Batch is the best part of it. I think that the inhibitor chip stuff, whether or not it was actual, like they. The mystery is good. The yeah. fog is cool. I hope by the time we get to the end of season three, if there is a season three, because I think the last episode is called like Order 99 or whatever, but mm-hmm. and, and we suspect that that'll be eliminating all of the clones. Am, am I wrong on that? Or, or is, is the last episode called Order 99? Is that right? Oh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't look up the I title. Haven't looked ahead of okay, ignore what I'm saying. I may not be credible at all right now. But I just had a, <laughs> maybe I imagined this. Regardless, if there's a season three, though, I would like to get to the bottom of all these inhibitor chips, uh, fives. We like mm-hmm. the sacrifice you made, favorite clone. Uh, let's get some more answers on him. Right, Anzo? Fives? CT5555? Yeah, the last episode's called Plan 99. Okay. Mm-hmm. So well, the question here was whether or not uh, Crosshair, why does this bad batch comply with the empire instead of going rogue i think it's all of the above things you said about right i think you know he's a soldier he's just doing his orders he also feels betrayed by the bad batch i think it's all all of the above Mm. Uh, you want to know what it is oh lord here we go he's just another tony stark government lap dog i knew it one i knew it i knew it (laughs) Freak the government. I don't believe you. There's more to it, K Dot. Let's nah, read some of these live the chats. Well, they're all the same. One time you do something. One time they do something for the government. Next thing you know, they're praising the government. Can't trust none of them. Remember Hawks when Omega might be was... right here. That's mm-hmm. he, they're probably setting that up. But I, 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 I just have no love for Omega. I, I think she's a, a, a nothing character. They're just trying to big up, uh, you know. Have, have it over uh, Boba Fett, you know, a female version of Boba Fett. That's what they're trying to do with her. I feel. I'll take it. I need as much force sensitive people and interesting characters. And I want Omega to be super force sensitive and everything so that we have a character in the future who wields lightsabers. They're missing. Another one that we don't know about. <laughs> Incredible episode. At the end, I was saying Crosshair may even be my favorite clone. More than fives? Damn, Matt, Matt, you're shaking your head like, yes? Dude, Crosshair, is, it's the mystery. You you hit the nail on the head before. The mystery is good. That's what's luring us in. Now, it, it all comes down to how they follow through with it and what the reveal becomes. Because they could ruin it. it it's very possible. But I feel like we're heading in a good direction with him. If the Bad Batch changed their suits, they would be hard to find and could blend in. Their clothes give them away. Kind of. They're trying to sell toys. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think. Whoa, whoa, whoa! A Star think... Wars, a Star Wars IP interested in the merchandising? That's that's weird. Yeah, they do that. <laughs> yeah, I think the not looking like Django and Boba Fett gives them away. I think his toothpicks are slow dose inhibitors that are keeping him in line. Oh. Ooh. thank you, Aaron. Plan ninety nine. Palpatine sounds like Putin. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, commentary wendy you guys want to get into like a side topic of real world politicians and alienate our audience completely crosshair is complying with the empire because he's signing their check he's they're signing his checks that's why yep 32 can commander cody be forgiven for executing order 66 they were under my control so yes i say yes no why why hold on 
be like Rex. I saw somebody fight it in this finale of season seven of Clone mm-hmm. Wars. What they were Commander they, Cody? What well, he couldn't wait to execute Order sixty six. Well, unless they didn't you can tell me, little, little, hold on, Kate, Kate, wait, wait. Unless you tell me that he missed Obi Wan on purpose or something like that, like oh, I was never really trying to, I was just playing along. If you t- if you convince me of that, and that's revealed, fine. If Commander Cody well, no, was I actually think they, aiming, they, they the beast missed. that he was riding on actually turned in and took the shot, as I, I, I read somewhere in mm-hmm. somebody yeah, told they, me, they, 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 up, he, they missed, they straight up missed, missed out of like on purpose or missed because they're bad shots. No, like, Which one? They they actually just missed. Yeah, they just missed. They were trying to kill him. All right, I'm yeah. not redeeming they were, you. They were no, 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 but but him. okay, look at I'm like not this. forgiving you. Look at it like this. Think of them like Bucky, right? Yes. Bucky, his body was used to kill all those people, but it wasn't Bucky doing it. So you can't really blame Bucky in this. Yes, Bucky, but here's the Bucky. thing, though. We have Rex, who was subjected to the same exact treatment, and Rex fought it. Some of those chips was... Uh, was def- like, it, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a question. People have a problem with Order 66? <laughs> Rex fought it. If you're I, telling me that there's an episode where Rex banged his head and that weakened the chip and that it was no, it's no, a different no, no. Than I'll, not I'll tell you the exact difference between Rex and Cody. Rex formed emotional attachments and it causes issues with the chip. And they, they talked about it somewhere along the way where there's if there's more attachments, emotions can have a play on how this chip functions because it's all brain functions. Now everything's interacting with it. Cody was more by the book. I'm leading a squad. This is a team. Everything's military tactics. <laughs> He was very by the book. He wasn't forming emotional attachments the way Rex did. Rex loves Ahsoka. And when it came down to now he has to kill her, his emotions beat the chip. And that's what saved Rex. Remember that episode in Clone Wars where he died? That was that was probably one of the best clone episodes. The clone who his he was Fives. Yeah, fives, and he he almost was about to reveal this what was going on, but he got killed. Yeah, and mind you, a lot of emotion went into why he defected, and also those chips, some of them was like kind of defected. And you guys notice how they called him a conspiracy theorist, and he was right the whole time, right? And you didn't want to mm -hmm. the the medical procedure, right, Anzo? Right, Anzo? I know you're with me. If great, if Vader can be redeemed, then so can Cody. Yeah. Uh, Vader thing. was only redeemed with Luke, not yeah. with the whole galaxy. But well, yeah, um, I, I would say you can't really hold it against uh, Cody for what he did in Order 66. And clearly he still my, feels guilty about control. it. I mean, how do you get mad at somebody for making the right choice? I don't understand. Mm. But you're you're way off. You're not even in this discussion right here. <laughs> I so it. let's let's <laughs> count heads. I'm the only we guy. all know Jaded was happy when all the young Padawans. Oh God! It was so it was so <laughs> cathartic. Oh my God! <laughs> you know, Jaded, I got some. If you haven't yet, go download and play Movie Duels, and play Nightfall. And invade the Jedi Temple with Anakin. And guess what happens when you get to the room with, that, with the young ones? You slaughter them. Good. Just from so the window. You can't give Jaded that much power. He's going to abuse it. I'm not going to abuse it. I'm going to do it properly. <laughs> Are you crazy? Yes, Fanic Shand. He is crazy. I say there's no forgiving him. Turn over to the, the live chat. Oh no! Uh, wait, wait, chill. Do you forget Bucky? Yeah, yeah, I forget Bucky. That's not fair. Come on, that's not fair. Where the god? I was part of the Empire, and I was told Order sixty six. I would have gone. It's about damn time. <laughs> <laughs> Name another person in Marvel who had the same exact treatment Bucky got and fought it. That's what I'm saying about Rex. What Matt Hawkeye. Cave has given us about how oh emotional Never attachments really influence Hawkeye. the chip. Hawkeye Cite did. your sources. Where does they where do they actually say that the emotions can uh, play but with the chip? But he never really fought it. Like he still had to go he had to go through that therapy to get rid of it. I'm just saying there is no like equivalent in that Marvel franchise of a guy who was also a winter soldier. So I can't give him that. I mean I'm just going I'm going off the aspect of mind control, not like winter soldiers, but, but mind control. It's, it's going to be a tough for oh Cody to redeem himself. Do I forgive him? I'll never forgive him. But if he wants to redeem himself by doing something spectacular, maybe. 
what it's what's that going to be though? Because uh, Luke Skywalker is the guy who fixes everything, not you. So it's not going to be like you. Like I'm not going to forgive you. Cody could have been the one who killed Sidious, and uh, and Chill would have said, "I don't forgive him. He's trash." <laughs> <laughs> I hold people I think accountable. See Cody meet his end in this season. Sabine Wren had designed a weapon called an arc pulse generator. Mm -hmm. It creates an electrical pulse that can incinerate any armor. Why not use this to win the war? Wendy, with you, and, and that's not your real was, name, but you've Sabine been all the over the place with the to today. Sometimes I click on your thing and I answer the question. Sometimes I don't, like right now. We're in the apparently final question. This is, apparently this is Waffle House Wendy, 33 burning questions. Right? Like, <laughs> it's appreciated. Go write some of these questions in like another video on the comment section, and I promise you I'll feature the good ones. 33. Has Sheev ever executed Order 69? <laughs> the real 33. Wait, no, 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 no. It's no. about damn time. It's about 33 damn time. is where does Palpatine rank amongst <laughs> the greatest villains in fiction? I am prepared right now to tell you he's number one top dog. He was in charge of the bad guys, in charge of the good guys, and just in the shadows lurking, saying, watch them fight. Episode and 9 does hurt his reputation a bit, but... Mm -hmm. I am, I, am per I am purposely Just throwing out episode side. 9. I'm purposely yes. throwing out episode 9 purposely. You know it is part of his history. Mm -hmm. He is top 5 or 3 if you like. This dude is the master at deception. This man Sidious. This man Sidious. Let me say this real quick. He had everyone fooled for so long. He let, he let his evil ways slip when he said, do it. <laughs> he, he, he didn't even acknowledge like oh my gosh i literally just said that like that what am i doing he gave up on this whole disguise he's like i need to make this happen even when he slipped up these fools still couldn't figure out it was him he he's top three Sidious is realize, he's looking with joker you do realize that palpatine's linchpin to his uh his success was relying on jar jar binks you do realize this yeah, yeah. Gargar Binks a, was more so. Oh, I mean, exactly how bad, how, exactly how much of a threat are you when Jar Jar Binks is your linchpin to your plan? Uh, no, but he, but he knew drunken he, fist. He knew he knew he could use because what did Jar, Jar Jar? What did he? He granted oh, no. emergency powers. Yeah, when when because what he he got elected to lead. You needed Jar Jar Binks for your plan to work. If you didn't have Jar Jar Binks, he would have never succeeded. That was all part of the plan. Naboo, mm -hmm. the stand-in senator, Jar Jar Binks, and uh, doing the exact right thing at the exact right time. That's because Palpatine knew what he was doing. He's the greatest villain in all of fiction. Onzo, who you got? The Joker? You got a pregnant Joker on top of him? No. It is not. Oh, yeah. will you stop? Hey, pregnant, 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 I actually pregnant don't know Joker anything about over, pregnant Joker. Pregnant I saw the thumbnails and videos, and I'm just we like, I'm not taking a part in that. any of this. It's, <laughs> it's, it's they're, they're doing it just to make the conversation. I'm like, yeah, if that. I know better. So, who did I ask? Onzo, go ahead. Uh, the question was, where does Palpatine rank amongst the greatest villains in fiction? Top five, for sure. Top five? Yeah. Absolutely. Who, is, who else is in your top five? Because I might be able mm. to say exactly why he's better than all of them. Dark Vader, Sizer Kose. Um, nice. Who else do we have? And there, um... Give me a minute. I'll, I'll think of the rest. So. He's the one who finessed Vader, though. He's the top. He's on is, top of is, Vader. Is is Scarface better than him? Yeah. <laughs> mm, I wouldn't say. See, Scarface. I've got I've got a top three villains in my and they always rotate. It all depends on the mood I'm in and, and where they land. Palpatine's in there. He's in yes. my top three. My other two are Hannibal Lecter and Thanos, and for Ooh. different reasons. Like Hannibal Lecter, very much like Palpatine. You work in the puppet strings, luring people in, false intentions, and then, you know, doing their thing. Thanos is like, half these people need to die, and here's my reason, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and I will do this as many times to as many worlds as I deem necessary. Like, his brutality is what brings him to my top three. But when it comes to intellectual villains, Palpatine and Hannibal Lecter. Cersei Lannister is the most evil. That's a Game of Thrones Ooh. villain. She's in there. Yeah, she's good. I, I think the only reason Honestly, Bowser is kind of debatable. Bowser. Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, thing, 
the thing with Palpatine though is that he ended up getting the the the, the front stage because Darth Vader died. But like we like I'm sorry for the first three movies it was Darth Vader was the main was the big villain of the Star Wars. It wasn't Emperor Palpatine. He was just a secondary character who ended up dying anyway. If you value Star- the prequels, then he's been there. The entire time in the shadows, lurking yes. and working everything. I know. Okay, so I mean, not, I, not the not the Skywalker saga. Mm. If you factor in the original trilogy and prequels, like Sidious is the big boss. Well, if that's the case, you might as well say Snope is the is the big bad because he was the one behind Emperor Palpatine. I, I mean, nah, no, so, he wasn't. That's that right. Snoke was Sidious. No, Snoke was yeah, he was a clone was, created by Sidious. And oh, okay. Sidious just right. put his essence in him and pretended to. Oh, okay. okay. Snoke is one of the biggest wasted characters. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not waste. That. <laughs> just, and just because he's the puppet master doesn't mean that he's the most evil. It's, I don't know. I would easily rank Darth Vader. I, look, above. Vader. Yeah, I, I put Vader over Paul. Evil. Too. Don't give me Vader's evil. Don't get me wrong, but he is. Look, I'll say this. He is Sidious's bottom B. B. Mm. His bottom B. We know if y'all he's the bottom B of mm-hmm. Sidious. He's the main one, but he's still the mm. Sidious is the pimp. He's the ah. I'm just saying is that Darth Vader has lines that that make you go, oh Christ, he's a badass. Palpatine. Oh no, I agree, I agree. He's still Palpatine, a badass. Palpatine, I mean, it's like Palpatine is, you know, he he basically goes nuts, right? Mm-hmm. And it kind of like takes away whereas Darth Vader is like. You know, I, I find your lack of faith disturbing. And it's like, that's it. That was it. That one line. And we're going, okay, Darth Vader is the baddest guy in the in the universe. 2009 Randy Orton is a top five villain. <laughs> Legend killer. <laughs> the punting John Cena's like, daddy. I would, I, would give it, I would give it to Vader, but still till this day, even like the main stuff, still till this day, we, we didn't see Vader like, Doing some real boss stuff like going around killing Jedi's. We seen him. The hallway happened. scene in Rogue One was pretty good. And those are cannon fodder minions. But you right. see, the thing with Vader is he was hands on. Empire Strikes Back. He's in the thick of it. He's going down to Hoth. He's looking for these guys. He's in the thick of it. Right. He he's. I know Palpatine. Whatever you could say, controlling everything. But Vader was the. You know, he was just a man. Like Vader killed how many of his own men because they failed? Like Palpatine's the guy with the plan. That I'm not taking that away from him, but I'm just saying is that yeah, okay, he's the guy in the back with the plan. So, so what? Mm-hmm. Look, I, I was I'll say this. Yeah, Sidious is not hands on no more. But I'm telling you, if Sidious got out there and was doing some hands on stuff, he would do it way better than Vader. Like, I don't know, man. I, I, the I most think hands that was, on that Palpatine they, 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 was was when he killed uh Maul and oppressing. You know, he went uh, in. He yeah. was I don't know, man. I, I think <laughs> he was I, 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 I'm more scared of Count Doku than I am of, of uh Palpatine. Palpatine. I wouldn't say that, but <laughs> I mean Dooku was struggling with a dwarf, so I mean hmm. I you sent me a video. Where do you want me to watch it at? No, it's just like what, for what everybody part? else to watch. Oh, you gotta play it. Oh, okay. Where am I? I play. No. Well, this is so. This is when dark, this is when City is fought Maul and oppressed. If you want to skip that a little bit, show a little bit of fight. Yeah, this is literally going in. Them. This fight here. Mm-hmm. Wait, who's fighting? Oh yeah, yeah. Sub, what's his name? Savage Press. What was his name? Savage Press. Press. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, He's taking a look the whole time. Like going through a list of like movie super, like movie villains. Heck, I pick. Uh, what's his face? Uh, this is crazy. Agent crazy Smith. Guy. I take Agent Smith as one of the better villains. Oh, oh yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there's better villain. It's just I don't so think you would top. say he's at least t- up top ten then, Jay. Oh well, he's definitely top ten, but nowhere close to number one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can agree with that. You know, top ten, top. I mean, heck, even Nurse Nurse Ratchet from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's mm-hmm. Nest. 
great. Movie. Sidious ain't my if number listen- one, but he's up there for me. He ain't my number one though, but he's up there. Oh, and a lot of people like that girl from Misery as a, a big deal, which I don't. But <laughs> Felicity, did you answer the question of whether or not he ranks amongst the greatest? Where does he rank amongst he the definitely, greatest? Players? I think he definitely does. I think you have Number to one. say that the man behind the man is it, he's got to be ranked. See, if you're if you're saying Vader is number one or in the top five, three, whatever, you've got to include Palpatine in there somewhere. Oh, I agree. He's in there. Okay, well then, where where would where would a character like Lord Voldemort rank then? Mm-hmm. I'm not a Potterhead, so I can't answer. Yeah, me that. neither. So that's why I was For me, asking. Voldemort, like I watched all the movies, but he's not nowhere near top ten. No, okay, I get it. I don't. What sounds more evil, Tom he's Riddle top, or Sheev Palpatine? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I can say Tom Riddle and not be afraid. Mm-hmm. Sheev Palpatine. Palpatine. They gotta yeah. say it together. Sheev Palpatine. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Well, if, that's the case, if that's the case, what's more scary, Palpatine or Jaws? <laughs> Jaws. <laughs> We're going to go by names. How about that? Jaws that is a little was, bit more intimidating, don't you think? That was 33 of Burning Questions. You can check us all out. Onzo from the YouTube channel, Bigford Entertainment, right? Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Thank you. We have The Matt Cave. Thank you for having me, sir. <laughs> Felicity Pooh Bell. Oh, thanks for having me. Check me out at uh, the Salty Inferno and at uh, Fan Shot First. SSJK.Sanctum. Uh, most of y'all know who I am. Y'all can find me here. I might live stream later. I'm definitely be posting that there for a while, going to a surprise birthday party. So mm. maybe I might live stream later. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. The Jaded Fanboy. Just making videos explaining how the things that you love actually suck. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and here's Scotty, who got an and invitation, in reality, and didn't show up, but expects me to read. I'm He's sorry, what? What, 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 was what was that delusion? What was that delusion? In reality, you love the things that you hate. Oh, yeah. I love you know, it. it's, it's like the good old. It's like the good old saying back in the day. Mm-hmm. If, mm-hmm. If, 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 uh, if a girl dislikes you, she really likes you. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, that try right? that. Try that and see how that works. <laughs> try that in real life. See how that works. No Bro, means no. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll well I'm not talking about that. I mean, no, that, it doesn't. That, that, you know, no, no. We're not even gonna let him finish that sentence. Tell him, Felicity. <laughs> Tell him. No means no. <laughs> and that's the way we go. 